six and seven. And the marker quickly, and it's the favourite early is Air. She goes to 50. Trico 590. Milan Princess 850. Just about set at the valley. And five dollars for Lonro number 11. As we take a possible event at Rose Hill Gardens this afternoon, the missile stakes. Four missile stakes when the stalls. Well, the favourite here for the 2001 edition is number six. Here she goes, and on to run. They're off in the missile stakes, a beautiful dispatch, and there she goes, one of the smartest out, going up very speedily, Trico, in company with Pride and Power, then Arrogance, not far away, a secret decree, followed by Natoire, Mulan, Princess, Sports Brat, row wide and last, a compact field, down past the 700, Pride and Power, the outside, shades Trico, here she goes, third, Arrogance, fourth, wide a secret decree is next, then Mulan, Princess, Lonro, Sports Brat, and Natoire drops out last, but only about eight lengths off the lead. Down past the 500 in the Miss Island, Trico, the mare from Goulburn, is the leader. That a half-length pride and power. A length away in third position. Here she goes on the inside streak at the cream. Ulan Princess is back fifth last. They straighten up now and come down past the 250. And Trico is the leader. Here she goes, is zooming up on the inside. Sports Brats weaving into the open. Aragons there from pride and power. But here she goes and Trico with Sports Brat. Three in line. Sports Brat, he put the nose in front of the mare here she goes sports brat is doing too well flying home lonro but sports brat wins the missile sports brat from here she goes and lonro close for second and third trico not far away with mule and princess and then came the twand forty dollars the trifecta 111 dollars and the first four loose with the new tech one joe Unlucky. Oh. Uh, we just missed the point then, but Lonro probably could have shifted outside of Secret Decree and uh, instead Larry opted to take the inside run and hence not getting a clear passage down the straight as you can well see now the horse gets clear and, and runs on very strongly as you would have expected him to. But Gary, all honest with your horse, he's done a good job. Yeah, he's, he, he got buffeted a little bit early too, you know. I, if you had to look at the head-on shot down the back, he was getting knocked about from all directions and he, 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 he couldn't, uh, he couldn't keep up for a while, and fair enough, he got held up the 200, but that's mm -hmm. racing. We've all had that sort of luck. No, you nearly didn't get... Mighty Mare Sunline has been voted Australia's Horse of the Year for the second year in a row. The Kiwi Mare, which won eight from 11 races, received more than 96% of votes from Australia's racing writers and race club administrators. The highlight of the season was her breathtaking win in the Cox Plate and international success in the Hong Kong Mile. Might and Power is the only other horse to claim the Racehorse of the Year title twice. Sunline will be back in action within weeks. San Domenico Stakes, Accelerator Top Rater, ahead of Fair Embrace, Chong Tong and Palais. Here's the full market, Accelerator 230, Mystigic at 37, Chong Tongs. Any late moves on track, Ian? Yes, John, they've only come for the one, and that is Accelerator, $1.80. They're racing, and Accelerator actually got the best of the start. The Ruffy Star of Piermont and a Mastigic out pretty well with without concern. And then comes Patton's, followed closely by Palais and Cannon's Halo. Fair Embrace over on the inside. He's right, 600 to go. And Mastigic, the outside, and Star of Piermont. The joint leaders, a couple of lengths, Cannon's Halo. Fair Embrace, fourth, Accelerator is fifth, followed by Palais, the inside, and then comes without concern concern from Patton's. A good way back is Roaring Forties with Chong Tong straightening up and Mastigic shook off star of Piermont. Accelerator, he's not doing enough at the moment and Munz is working hard on him in the meantime. Mastigic taken on by Fair Embrace. A length further back Cannon's Halo. Accelerator struggles from Palais but it's still Mastigic the leader. About 50 to go. Fair Embrace can't pick up Mastigic and Mastigic wins the San Domenico. Fair Embrace second, Palais third, Cannon's Halo fourth, Accelerator, a most disappointing performance today, followed by Patton's on the outside, Chong Tong, Roaring Forties, without concern, beat one in, and that was Star of Piermont's. No peace, but was still able to shoot away at the top of the straight with the race in his keeping, and congratulations to... If you're looking ahead and having a bet here, it's with Century Kid, who has all of the form lines to win, ahead of Galliano and on type, and $10, 15 to 3, Century Kid, the asterisk referring to a ratings special, 220. 31, Ale Suez, Rye Hero, 39, 970, Galliano, 580 for Maitland Gold, $8.80 for on type, 864, participate, the three-year-old engaged here, 
$140,000 worth. And they're off this time at a very level start it was in Century Kid. And Maitland Gull jumped out quickly. Participators come along past the 850. And Maitland Gull is showing tremendous dash. Uh, this her first run back from a spell. She three quarters participate. A length the Century Kid and three quarters on type. Two to Natoire inside Padster. Then Galliano L.A. Suez and a couple of lengths to the veteran Rai Hero. Along the side, 550 out on the premiere and Maitland Gold. Three quarters of a length on the youngest runner in the field participate. Century Kid waiting for the run, followed by on type Padstow to the outside and then the Twar straightening. Maitland Gold joined by participate. Century Kid on the inside trying to push through a narrow gap. On type and Padstow's putting in a beauty on the outside. They race to the 200 mark. A Century Kid not getting any room and Padstow races to the front on type second. Maitland Gold's thrown in the towel. Forget the favourite. The leader Padstow on type is fighting back. On type on the inside and Padstow split the line. Photo on type or Padstow a thriller. Century Kid no luck third. Followed by Maitland Gold and then came Participate. Further away on the race was Galliano, Natoire, L.A. Suez and Ray Hero. Last to complete the course. Race by... John and Julie Singleton through their Strawberry Hill Stud Syndicate, trained by Gay Waterhouse and ridden by Brian York, has run 110.3. Place because usually Century Kid likes to bowl along in front, and uh, as it turned out, that may have been uh, costly. As you can see there, he's getting uh, squeezed up on the rails and had absolutely no hope of winning. He's tried uh, to ride the, the almost perfect race, hasn't yeah. he? Fourth on the fence, and it hasn't worked out. I don't think there's any doubt if he'd have led, he'd have won, mm. because uh, the way he got to the line here was. Mm. Pretty exceptional. But still, very good. Up near the outside and Prince of Pop also propped in the air. They balance racing. Uh, Norvelly was actually one of the first to hit the ground. Quickly out is Zeran Pack and Holmesville Lass is coming across to join Slide Away. In for straight. About eight lengths covered the field as they go by the 600. Uh, and Aaron Pack's had a pretty cushy run in front as they reach the bend. He leads a length and a half. Holmesville Lass. Carberry sending Norvelly through near the inside. Then Prince of Pop going around the outside of Slide Away who dropped off very quickly. Wider still Corporate Bruce. Noble Sky got through on the inside. Then Noble Cavalier but Aaron Pack with a tidy lead. Noski hasn't moved on him. Carberry shakes up Northerly. Northerly's coming out after Aaron Pack and so's Corporate Bruce and Prince of Pop. Aaron Pack in front shifting a bit of ground. Northerly coming at him with on the outside Prince of Pop. Corporate Bruce but Carberry gave him a dig and away goes the great horse. Northerly's won it untouched. A super return. He absolutely annihilated them here in the Goodwood. And a good pat on the head from Patrick too as he wins. Second home either Prince of Pop or on the outside Corporate Bruce. That's the return that the public wanted. As you commented earlier, he just acted up a little behind the gates and you don't like to see that as a trainer. So I think there's a bit of natural improvement in the horse yet. I wanted to mention about him, the similarity of his galloping style to that of Sunline is quite uncanny. Mm. The lofty carriage of the head. Mm -hmm. It's almost identical. If they come down the straight together in the cocked plate, they look mm. like a couple of emus. <laughs> with yeah. their heads up in the air. And Rich, the other thing I noticed... Hey, look, the, the standard of the opposition is not what he's going to meet over here, no, but he but still beat them impressively. And looking 100 out, this horse looked gone. And Paddy's just sort of stoked him up a bit, and the horse just lifted that extra gear, as all good yep. horses do. It was a fantastic performance. And all of the facts suggested that perhaps he couldn't win first up. He had 61 kilos. He'd never run first or second mm. first up. Uh, he was never been on a rain affected mm. track. It was a true dead there, and they still mm. ran good time. One eighteen ninety two, and he was named a WA's champion racehorse mm. last night. So there'll be some Another sore heads in Perth. Good morning to you, Perth. Good morning to you. Two big shocks in the turf world tonight, with last year's Cup hero suddenly retired. Melbourne Cup winner Brew has broken down in New Zealand, ending plans for an assault on back-to-back -back cups in November. And in a further blow to the Spring Carnival, Caulfield Cup winner Diatribe has also been retired on the eve of his return to racing. Um, look at the market. One Viscount is the top rater from three Magic Albert, six Perfect Crime, two Accelerator. Viscount R M Quinn five thirty, Accelerator three dollars, Magic Albert two forty, sixteen for New Key five. We called up shortly. Terrific betting race here. Any one of the top three go. And this is a terrific race coming up. Three ninety Viscount, two ninety Accelerator, three dollars Magic Albert. Now, this Gale Force Wind. 
They're off in the up and coming and they broke it a nice even line. Who is going to lead? New Key looks as though he'll take it up at the end of 150 metres. A half length on Cannon's Halo. In third position, about three lengths away. Viscount is last wide, but not far away. 800 metres left to go now and Cannon's Halo rests the lead from New Cree, uh, Key. Perfect Crime's gone up a length away third and a couple accelerator. Followed closely by Magic Albert. Viscount is wider out and the roughy goes stagger lead brings up the rear. 500 left to go now and again New Key has a shot at Cannon's Halo. Perfect Crime third accelerator boxed in from Magic Albert being revved up. Viscount to the extreme outside and six lengths to go Stagger Lee. Around the corner Perfect Crime went via the cape and New Key straightens. More than a length in fact on Perfect Crime followed by accelerator Viscount. Magic Albert struggles. New Key is the leader. Perfect Crime second followed by accelerator and the others can't win it. It's New Key in front 50 metres to go. The roughy of the Waterhouse stable being tackled by Perfect Crime but New Key. New Key I reckon held on to beat Perfect Crime Accelerator and wider out Magic Albert from Viscount. Good margin to go Stagger Lee and Cannon Taylor at the tail of the field. And to beat Perfect Crime who went via the cape on the turn. Terrific run by this marauding cult trained by Gary Portelli. As did Viscount so as you can see in the all series coming down the outside now. He really found the line nicely as well. Yeah, he got to the line OK. He was only beaten less than two lengths by count. But uh, I quite like the run of uh, Perfect Crime. I thought he was the run of the race. Mm. Um, New Key in the, in the right spot at the right time. And uh, quite, you know, obviously in the right spot at the right time. But I wouldn't be taking too much from that when he was folding up on the line. And, you know, I'd be looking to horses like Perfect Crime and Viscount now to take over as, as spring progresses. Yeah. Is that a better uh, rater ahead of our Egyptian reign, Umph and Hosanna 1. Uh, the uh, top raider at 3.30, Hosanna 4.70, Big Odds Barra win, Fair Embrace 14, Palais 9.90 Moon Flute, which won a barrier trial recently, and Oomph at $4.50, and Oomph at $4.50, Silver Shadow in 30 minutes from Republic last to come forward, previous, they're off this time and Patton's reared when the gates opened and lost seemingly all chance and Palais jumped in front joined by Fair Embrace, Oomph and Ha Ha not far away and the wide alley is dropping back from Barrowin and Patton's is tacking on, Oomph held up in the lead, just shows the way from Fair Embrace who's nosing it now as they race to the 600, a length the Ha Ha moon flute is wider out from our Egyptian reign and not far away Palais improving with Hosanna, Patton's missed the kick and is circling the field, They're then Republic Lass Angora Barra win and win here, win there, drops out last. 400 to go as they turn in the silver shadow. The heavily backed oomph and oomph got about a neck in front of Fair Embrace as they straighten the length. The ha ha coming into it. Our Egyptian rain going up on the rails and a couple of lengths to Hosanna and Palais from Moon Flute. But ha ha, the golden slipper winner this year. She accelerated and away she goes for Jimmy Cassidy to blitz them in the silver shadow. Ha ha wins from Hosanna. Hosanna and Oomph. And then came Palais followed by Barrowin, Republic Lass and our Egyptian reign. Angora, win here, win there. Fair embrace, moon flute and patterns who reared when the stalls opened lost all chance. Hosanna, Oomph. I tell you what, uh, and I'm not getting carried away here. I've got a tremendous opinion of this filly. She was up in class today. She was down in distance. She drew into the pie stall. Republic Lass. Keep your eye on her, Republic Lassen. Yeah, she's an absolute crackerjack filly up to 1,200 metres. I wonder if she'll turn out to be a specialist sprinter in the future. Here's Gay with Joe McKinnon. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, she's probably in a prime, ha ha, and she's reversed that trend of the Golden Slipper winner mm. not being able to come back yeah, it's this a year. race, the Silver Shadow. Let's have a look at the replay here, Richard. Uh, a lot of depth in the race. The run that I like the most, Hosanna, who's going to be looking yeah. for a lot further. Oh, I would have said Ha-Ha's was the best run in the race. I mean, that, that's stating the bleeding oh. obvious, but uh, she was dominant. And Hosanna, the best of the rest. Yeah, I'd go with you there. I tell you what, Ian Craig, uh, after the race, mentioned a run, and just watching the replay, finished in about fifth position, was, uh, or sixth position, Republic Lass. Yeah. It'll pick up a race or two. She's only had um, the three stars. Form is the top raider, number six, ahead of two Shogun Lodge, one Tie the Knot, and 11 Diamond Dane. So Blondo doesn't make the first four in the ratings. Tie the Knot 10, 390 Shogun Lodge, Referral 15, Big Odds Freemason, Pastor Universal Prince, 
Kirata Storm 42, big odds for sale of Century as well, Diamond Dane 17, and the favourite Lon Rose at $3.30. Please note 970, 380 Shogun Lodge, referral at... ...in hundred the journey today of the Warwick Stakes. Uh, coincidentally, last year it was uh, a tie the knot, $6 million, eh? From 55 starts, 20 wins. $150,000 worth the uh, San Miguel... And not a bad break either, and one of the best to bounce out was the favourite Lon Rowe. Dot Arrested jumped quickly, Sports Pratt up looking for the lead, referral not far away. And then Diamond really stringing out at the 900, and Lon Rowe kept at it by the Queenslander Diamond Dane. Tracking them third, Sports Pratt. Two and a half further back, Mr Bureaucrat, who has referral. He's outside, Pastor Express, he's in a, a length and a half. Dot Arrested, three, Shogun Lodge, Sailor's Century, one tie the knot. Four lengths, Universal Prince on the outside of Freemason, and and two and a half lengths curator storm in the Warwick Stakes they head to the corner 450 to go and Diamond Dana clear leader from Lonrose Sports Brat Shogun Lodge is circling the field very quickly Mr Bureaucrat looking for a run and then Dot Aressa around the corner again Lonrose sidled up to go to the lead from Diamond Dane two to Shogun Lodge out on the centre Mr Bureaucrat Sports Brat and then Dot Aressa and tie the knot Lonrose is the leader the baby of the field a hundred to go it's Lonrose a length a half length in front on the inside Diamond Dane, Shogun Lodge the outside, Digger McClellan gets everything out of Lonro, Lonro beat Diamond Dane, Dead Heat Shogun Lodge and Mr Bureaucrat for third and then Freemason followed by Universal Prince Dotteressa, tie the knot further out on the track then came Sail of Century, Curator Storm Pastor Express and the last couple in Sports Brat and a Referral of a length, the time for the race was 1 minute 17.30 and the sectional time 635.75 so that's a slick last 600 on a because of his age Lonro was in receipt of uh, eight kilos I think from the second horse and eight and a half kilos from Shogun Lodge so you know he did get a weight advantage but uh, and a serious one but they could have run uh, Lonro in the up-and-coming stakes against mm. Viscount but the stable chose to split the mm. two star three-year-olds and um, you know, I think Lon Rose was, was pulling the right rein. He was unlucky at his last... Criticism, from, criticism yesterday from uh, the trainer, Bobby Thompson, and a lot of the punters about your ride. Do you think uh, it's justified? Oh, well, there's going to be critics out there when a horse gets beat, and, um, you know, people have their money on the horse, probably expecting to win. But, um, no, I just went out there and done the job I had to do. And, unfortunately, when I was conceding... Um, you know, ground and weight to a nice three-year-old uh, didn't go my way. Yeah. Now, can you see the race now? I can have been really happy with the run. Oh, outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. Because you know, like, he, he left Tie the Knot, because Tie the Knot was tracking up behind me, and, you know, Paddy took virtually the same line I did throughout the race, mm. and he left Tie the Knot standing, and not many horses can do that. Um, you know, it's all very exciting for the horse's preparation. Glenn, do you take... ...to have made good progress since, uh, since winning the Golden Slipper. I think the dangers of the stable mates here, the maiden, a number nine moon flute. Now, she's all quality, this filly. Uh, I like her a lot. I think she, and I just think with that heart under her belt, uh, behind Mastigic in the San Domenico, and I just think with that... Well, I don't think uh, punters on track would have expected uh, what they've been offered. Uh, it is far better odds on track than we thought we'd get about Sunline. And the reason for that is the uh, solid support that's come for the Queenslander Felvalon who's been specifically set for this race. He's after a little... Sunline lining up to win this uh, event. She's already pocketed nine Group 1s and $8 million in stakes. Sunline unbeaten first up, unbeaten at Mooney Valley, unbeaten at the distance. The reigning horse racing in the Manicato and Sunline jumped as well as anything, but Desert Sky is the first to show out and leads her in the early part. Felvalon just behind them with Miss Powerbird pushing up along the rail and Sir Boom and Sports go forward out of the leader. Out of the name on his inside, two links to Piavonic Mastic and three links to Weasel Will. Up the side now, Desert Sky out very wide on the course, Sports in the middle, and the Great Mare Sunline closest to the inside, but she stays about four horses away from the rail. In behind them, Felvalon is following Sunline, then Sir Boom out of the name, Miss Powerbird close to the rail, and then came Piavonic Mastic and Weasel Will. Sunline the leader, Charles just pushing her along as she comes to the home turn. She's got a bit of a fight on her hands because Miss Powerbird's railing through, 
and Felvalon's right behind them and Pia Vonix running the race of her life as she challenges Sunline round the home turn and heads her. What a surprise. Pia Vonix takes the lead now from Sunline who can't fight back and then Felvalon but Pia Vonix racing away. Can't believe my eyes. Pia Vonix won it pulling away from Sunline and Felvalon. Then Mastic Weasel Will followed by Miss Powerbird. Long break in the field to uh, Sir Boom. Another very long break to Sports followed by Desert Sky and Don of the Name last of all. OK, we're down here. We're in the uh, area. All the trainers are here, and so is Tony Noonan. Tone, we're live on Sky. Congratulations. I'm dumbfounded, Andrew. Jeez, you know, haven't won a Group 1 race, and uh, uh, just, no, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Could you believe it? Sunline race-wide, but quickly gets the better of Sunline. She battles on well, Sunline, but it was just, just too classy, Piavonic. Don't and uh, in the circumstances, uh, she just, uh, you know, sort of uh, uh, a bit of a all around at this stage of things, so uh, she'll improve with that run. How did you feel through it there today? She, they, they have a, a tendency of staying out wide. Yeah, actually, I, I felt that he probably could have uh, shaded the corner a little bit and uh, saved a little bit of ground that way. Yeah. But uh, the winner come from outside him, so uh, she'll have each other against it. Did you feel vulnerable at all going into today? No, I definitely did, yes, because, as I say, as a... Uh, uh, six year old, another year older, she's uh, you know, sort of um, uh, needs another run to uh, get herself ready. Okay, now I'll just. Uh, she's uh, definitely improved with that run, so uh, as I've said all along, today was the one where uh, she could be most vulnerable in, and uh, after all the uh, the big ones coming up in another couple of months. Yeah, we've. Uh, at Benny Valley, first defeat at 1200 metres, first defeat first up. So I suppose that we now know that she is vulnerable. She's a six year old mare, she's been everywhere, so she's had it tough. But I'm not writing her off. She still showed oh. guts, didn't she, to come again uh, yeah. near the post. You never write a chance. It would be if she was running over the 2,000 metre mark. She had plenty of groundwork in the leg. She looked nice and hard, nice and lean. But she strengthened up this year. And uh, let's just say she's finished maturing, yeah. I think. And she was taken on by Sports and Desert Sky early. They finished 13th and 17 lengths behind her, respectively. So they gassed her, and that didn't help, did it? Well, look, I thought... Yours? Yeah. Um... You've had a race built up as a match race. Now, it was going to be Sunline, Falvalon, Falvalon, Sunline. They've been blown out yeah. again. It happens all the time. Yeah. And uh, that mare had great form, as I said, before she went, uh, went for a little let-up during the winter. She's come back. She's struck the right track that she loves Mooney Valley. Um, she's struck the right surface. She likes it soft. She's just happy at this stage, and it's, uh, well, there you go. Carpstad Way on 14, closely followed by Northerly, Rose Archway, Tempest Morn, Native Jazz on 16, Universal Sunline, $3.25, Northerly, $5.50, Viscount, $10, and then Jim and Tonic in Shogun Lodge together with Tempest. And down five, the JJ Liston, La Zagaletta, 100, Umrum, 97, Ackerbilt, 97, and Sir Clive, 97. Now here's a full market on the race, Sky Heights 46, Umrum $9, Darren Beedman's Mount, Scoozy Please 11, La Zagaletta 420, Royal Voyage 3077, Dandy 570, Scenic Warrior 23, and he seems to be slightly over the odds. Big Pat 21, In a Flurry 11, Market Pro. Thanks Andrew, great race, and uh, La Zagaletta in a wide betting race, just marginally ahead of Sir Clive. Plus got away well with Royal Voyage and Umrum getting up on the inside, followed by Dandy Kid, and uh, just off them in the early stages of the race. Then Sir Clive getting up to be sixth or seventh, who's back second last, and last of all is Sky Heights. Down the side they race, and Dandy Kid by a half to Umrum. A length to Love's Choice, Ackerbilka hit away the outside to win a flurry. Two and a half lengths to the Grey La Zagaletta, followed by Royal Voyage, and then Flushed and Sir Clive a length away the inside. Trailed by Scoozy, Please, Scenic Warrior, Bello Signor. Well back market price and a break to Big Pat. Trailed by Native Jazz and Sky Heights. Into the straight in the list and now Dandy Kid being tackled by Umrum. Love's Choice wider out and they're followed by Inner Flurry and La Zagaletta. Ackerbilk just behind them looking for the way clear. They're across the track and next is Scoozy Please and Sir Clive. Umrum inside the 200 now tackled by Inner Flurry and La Zagaletta. La Zagaletta letting down with the great runs. Put his nose in front. Inner Flurry's kicking back. La Zagaletta just the leader and won it by a neck. 
over in a flurry. Ackerbilk might have grabbed third from Umrum and Native Jazz was the big run in the race, storming home at the end of it, followed by Scenic Warrior. Sky Heights also made ground. And then Scoozy Please, followed by Market Price, Love's Choice, Bellow Senor, Sir Clive. And then there's a break to Dandy Kid and Big Pat, trailed by Royal Voyage and flushed at the tail of the field. La Zagaletta has taken out the JJ Liston Stakes. It's a great ride. I was a bit worried early, but he pushed out under Royal Voyage just before the corner and uh, had a lovely clear run after that. What are your plans for? 4, 13 and 2 across the line in the J.J. Liston Stakes. I mean, he, he's good form, keeps putting him off the clack of the course job for a, another year or so. Um, you know, he, he... There's a couple of good runs in the race. Native Jazz is one of them. We'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, just looking at Scenic Warrior, you would have been pleased with that too, Lee, would you not? Yeah, we were very pleased with him, Graham. I, I opted to take the, the, the move of removing the blinkers for him off him first up because... Uh, we're a little bit worried about the horse over racing. As it turns, it was a yeah. pretty good run, and uh, I think I catch it. But he did have the clear passage. Uh, Scenic Warrior had an interrupted passage, and old Sky Chase, Caulfield Cup winner two years ago, he ran the fastest last 200 metres in the race, 11.81. So uh, a good comeback run from Sky Chase too. I think he sky means height. Sky High. Sky High. Sky, yeah. uh, sorry. Sky, sky, sky yeah. Chase, just a touch. Yeah, that's right. First up. The Peter Pan Stakes, Accelerator and Magic Albert are the top raiders, and there's not much between them. On Accelerator 210, Magic Albert 280, 27, Participate 840, Evander, 30. And, uh, just having a look back over the years, some good horses have won this. Kingston Town in 1979, Bess Weston, Sir Dan Participate, one of the best to bounce, Accelerator and Magic Albert both got out well. Zed Force and Prince of Player not far back, followed by the Philly Hummel, Hello Pamela. Length and a half away next on the inside of Vander from to the 700 marker and Participate just in front of Accelerator, a length and a half to Magic Albert, followed by Prince of Play, who's over on the inside of Hello Pamela. A couple of lengths of Vander, Zed Force, and then a gap to industrial fan Pimpala warrior who's hard at it from Kavassier and last of all is full limit. They race to the corner in the Peter Pan and participate just the leader from Accelerator. Hello Pamela's gone up swiftly. Magic Albert is going with the filly. Hello Pamela. Almost four in line at the 300. Magic Albert a nose now and Accelerator. Participate feeling the strain. Hello Pamela likewise but Magic Albert's drawn clear, clear now. Wide out is Kavassier but it's Magic Albert and Justin she and a couple on. Accelerator and Kavassier but Magic Magic Albert, this quality cult from Gosford, brilliantly home in the Peter Pan. Magic Albert from a photo between Accelerator and Kavwasia, then Prince of Play, followed by Participate Full Limit, and then a gap to Industrial Fan Evander, followed by Hello Pamela, Pimpala Warrior, and Zed Force brought up the rear. Brave Warrior holds the race record, 128.37, 35.19 the sectional time, and the winner is... Make an interesting... Honestly. And I said that in the winter when he won out of the 1200 here. When he gets to sort of seven furlongs plus, you'll find that you'll see that real good acceleration. And that's what he showed today. And horses that quicken like that will win good races. To the winter months. Straight as a gun barrel. The same could not be uh, said for the runner up uh, accelerator. I think uh, Magic Elbert has already got the water on Accelerator and will continue uh, to do that. You wouldn't uh, want to be backing Accelerator again to beat Magic Elbert. Look at Accelerator getting away from the rail as Magic Elbert does everything right. Gee, I reckon uh, he's a nice type. X rating 100 ahead of Century Kid, Tia and Lord Essex. Century Kid 290, Spinning Hill 11, Belle du Jour 890, Stan Zayk 35, Notoire 27, Phoenix Park 580, Lord Essex $12, Knickerbocker Kid $37. What a cracker sprint field it is. Matter of Honour 24, adamantly 990. From one of the owners, Sam Fisman. And uh, it's basically up to, uh, to Jimmy, the riding tactics, to go forward and uh, hope that good luck goes his way. They're off on the Concord. Beautiful start too, and actually Matter of Honor got the best of it. Phoenix Park jumped out well. Marwin Gold will head the pair. Century Kid wide and next followed by Stan Zag adamantly. And then Lord Essex Progress, Belle de Jour, Pride and Power. 750 and the flying Marwin Gold put two and a half Phoenix Park. A length the Matter of Honor, then comes Century Kid. Another two and a half to Stan Zag. Adamantly on his outside from Lord Essex Progress, Belle de Jour, Spinning Hill, Tia. And then Natoire and a good margin, Pride and Power and Nicobar. 
Knickerbocker Kid. They're well strung out, straightening up, and Marwan Gull, the leader. A length on Phoenix Park, bridging the gap quickly. Two lengths to Matter of Honor. Then Century Kid stands, Zag followed at the head of the others by Lord Essex. But Phoenix Park hits the front past the 200. And the rider, Brian York, going for home on Phoenix Park. It raced about four. Lord Essex and battling on Matter of Honor. But Phoenix Park, a mile too good in the Concord. Lord Essex second, photo third, spinning hill wide out in Matter of Honor. And then came at the head of the others, adamantly billed as your stands, Zach Marwin Gold Tier. Century Kid didn't run on, followed by Progress Knickerbocker Kid. Will Circle, and uh, this fellow's gone 33.94. Great win. Phoenix Park raced by MB Crit. To the Eps into the Epsom, because A, it's a long well, way off the Epsom, but B, it's on that inner that's track. That's right, and that was what Brian York pointed out in yep. the interview. It's going to be a concern with many horses. Runs galore in the race. Look at Spinning Hill getting home oh. frame in the yes. tie the knot colours down the outside. Lord Essex was another outstanding first up run, as was Matter of Honour, and Belle du Jour found the line yeah. nicely too, so a heap of... Uh, he'll win a big race, Lord es Essex. He's already won a nice race, but yeah, he'll win another big race. race. Yep. Yeah. Whatever century dollars that one yesterday in Brisbane, Brisbane didn't it? Oh, uh, Placing, that's right, yeah. Uh, Spinning Hill, $10. Mm. Shogun Lodge at 12 with Century Kid. There you go. So he'll need to win this and win it easily, despite his whopping big weight of 62 kilos. Let's see how he goes. Here's Darren McCauley. Racing in the Farnley, little cabin cruiser was the first away. Carberry has dug northerly up out of the gates. He landed second. Satan's halo pace as they go to the 1,000 metres. Michel Jester, the Farnley field goes by the 550 and cabin cruiser, the pint size mare, leads the way from Satan's halo. In behind them, country blazer. Carberry's taking off with northerly, going around in Prince of Pop. A bit more than a length infrastructure. And they were followed by Rixton. Corporate Bruce track Prince of Pop into the home straight. Racing to the three. Northerly Prince of Popper together. It's Prince of Pop going home a bit the better. Northerly's under the stick and Corporate Bruce is beginning to run on. Corporate Bruce, Prince of Pop, Northerly coming back at them on the inside. Corporate Bruce though going home the better with the big pull on the weights and Corporate Bruce. Corporate Bruce proves to be the giant killer. Beat Northerly. Third home Prince of Pop followed by Country. Corporate Bruce. Written 60, Northerly 120, Prince of Pop $2, Quinella 3. I've been beating, obviously, but um, in reality, um, I was happy with the run. I think he did as much as he should have done on, under the conditions today. Did you have him wound up any more than what he was for his return in the Goodwood? No, he would have been about as fit as the time before. I've had to try and keep him. Make the run. I was slightly disappointed, I, I, only in so far that he didn't win. Mm. But um, when, you, when you figure out that he has carried... 62 odd kilos and second up, yeah, second up and um, yeah. you know the tracks a little bit give in the track and, and yeah. a very good horse beat him corporate yeah. bruce over there is a very smart yeah. individual so he kept finding too he did you keep know, finding. Kept finding in the interviews it was summed up perfectly yeah. and they made him carry the weight absolutely mm -hmm. so Look, I wouldn't give up on him he's too good a horse for that and he just here about here eases up see mm. so he's, i'm not yeah. gonna knock around too much yeah, yes. so it does make it interesting, doesn't it? Because well, Sunline and all the... yeah, Sunline and Northerly both beaten mm. in the last uh, last week or two. Mm. So uh, maybe it just opens it up for some other horses who uh, who normally wouldn't be considered Cox Plate chances. Mm. Maybe everyone will have a go now. That's we're here, figure on on the outside of Hero, tit for tat on the outside of the two, starting to sprint, and then Cinderella, Fritz is getting right up on the inside, figure on, tit for tat, wide around Cinderella, and Fritz is absolutely flying on the rail, they're across the track, Fritz goes to figure on, Cinderella around wide, but it is Fritz to win the midway, Fritz with a brilliant ride, Noel Harris, Yes, that was the Group 2 Mudgeway Sacks yesterday in uh, New Zealand and in sixth position, Carpstad Wade. Lovely run on unsuitable conditions yesterday. Right, uh, continuing around. Over 97. Have a look at the win dividend on offer about Spadanza, $34. King of Prussia, $10. Spadanza, $34. Tully Dane, $14.33. Tully Thunder, $95. Hot Beat, $60. Uga Chaka, $3.30. Magical Miss, $41. At the Valley, Uga Chaka unbeaten in her two starts. 
Yugo and Golden Delicious drives through near the inside of Jarlane on the improved deep out around Ruby's Jester and Family of Song in the centre. King of Prussia back behind the midfield on the inside from Hot Beat, Yuga Chaka. Magical miss out very wide, then Mustard will spar Danza towards the tail and Tally Thunder. Golden Delicious led around the home turn from Tally Dane, three deep and Hastie back in the centre. Pelidama wobbled around the bend and took Raja Lane wide. Ruby's Jester next to Zay cornered and Yuga Chaka in traffic and a long way back. Golden Delicious is joined by Tally Dane running a more forward race. He's put the head in front. Raja Lane is down the outside and King of Prussia's got through but Tally Dane shot clear about 50 out. It's home and Tally Dane wins it two and a half. Raja Lane, King of Prussia third. Magical miss running on well. Golden Delicious tiring fifth. They're followed by Ruby's Jester. Back behind them then were Yuka Chaka in company with Family of Song, Hot Beat. Hey, he got a fine little head. That uh, Tully Dane is a nice colt. He should be. He cost six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There was no doubt that he probably. Well, there's no doubt that he did need the run when he in defeat last start. But here he is. Here uh, he's by Danehill. So you wonder whether the downgraded track really suited him. His uh, action uh, uh, a little bit over the place, wasn't it? But his win was authoritative. Uh, a terrific win, and he's going places. Tully Dane by the same uh, token. Yuga Chaka, who had uh, very high raps, was going nowhere in the straight. Stewards reported that uh, Yuga Chaka uh, was hampered uh, soon after turning for home. I think Yuga Chaka threw in the... At Caulfield, with the big one coming up, the Memsey. And you will be seeing her in about 22 minutes. She's top rater, of course, for the Memsey Stakes, ahead of Mastic, Piavonic and 31. What about that old fella? Lining up in... Lining up in his seventh Memsey Stakes. Master I-14, Ulk, Sunline, $1.50, and Piavonic, $7.30. See the look in her eye. She is... I guess there's... The jury's out just a little bit, um, but you'd dearly love to see her bounce back and, and win. I thought the Manicato run was superb, really, because uh, she got attacked. Up and dawdled out, Sunline first to begin. Brave Chief got away quickly. So too did Desert Sky, and they're going forward in the early part, and Childs let them go. He steadies on the mare. Sir Boom up to the rum. At the 800, Desert Sky in front. He sets a steady tempo by a half to Brave Chief. On the outside, Sir Boom trapped out, and Sunline right behind them, travelling sweetly fourth. Then Mastic, Piavonic peeling out wide from Weasel Will, Adolescence and Rum. With the 600 behind them, Desert Sky by a length to Brave Chief, and Sunline right behind the leader. Sir Boom the outside from Mastic, and then came Piavonic as they come to the corner, and Charles has got away from the rail, and he's out after this leader on Sunline. Desert Sky in front, Sunline challenges him as they come around the home turn, and they've raced away to Mastic, Sir Boom, and then Piavonic on the outside, but the great mare's taken the lead. Sunline at the 200 metre mark. Charles gave her a slap with the whip. She got away a couple of lengths in front, but she's near the inside, and Piavonic and Rum is running a huge race. Sunline is clear, though, near the line, and the champion mare, the queen of the turf, is back on her throne tonight. Sunline's won at a length and a half to Piavonic and Rum. And they're followed by Mastic, and behind these to finish was Sir Boom and then Adolescence. A break, Weasel Will, who never came into it. Desert Sky finishing towards the tail, and back there to Brave Chief. Sunline has won. Won two from three, and she's won two Memsies. It's probably a little silly to say, but it's just not her best track, I don't feel. And uh, she did also stay close to the inside, and there's no doubt that's not the best part of the track. The best part is clearly out wider where those... Play I mean, there were plenty of doubting Thomases about. Well, there always were. Yeah. You know, going to be. Anyway, when the so, champion, uh, yeah. As far as we're concerned, uh, you know, didn't worry he was getting beat last time, and uh, today was uh, justified that. Yeah, and, and you were happy in the run? And you settled Definitely, down behind yep, the yep. speed there? Well, this is it. Yeah. that... Uh, if he'd sat him behind last time, but uh, the valley could have been a little bit different story too. Were you concerned, uh, Trev, that the, at the track was getting worse as the day went on? With oh, the definitely. Heavy, you definitely. Know, because because uh, he's better than on firmer ground, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, a lot better. And, yeah. and uh, you know, I just didn't want to uh, have too hard a to run yeah. today. And uh, I said the much-loved Sunline going down to the line. Piavonic second and 100 to 1 pop rum um, getting home. A lot of discussion yesterday about the weight uh, she was racing at, some 22 kilos heavier than what she was at this mm. exact uh, point of her preparation last time in. Mm. I'm not, yeah. not a huge fan of, of weights as far as uh, determining horses' fitness because I think that sort of proved it. You can be 22 kilos overweight and still win impressively. I'm, uh, I think it can be more confusing than definitive. Yeah. Okay, Keith, your thoughts? 15 starts. 
Okay, race one at Royal Radwick and the Sky Ratings put Donna Natalia on top with a dividend of 6.30. Promised so much and delivered so little to Mooka Moncha, Fair Embrace 6.40 and Stylish Lass $2.30. Mastigic $5, Finbar $12. Trenches. And they're off. And the best out was Donna Natalia. Mastigic jumped out well and so did Mooka Manchi. And not far away is Finbar. Then the favourite stylish last. Fair embraces second last and four lengths to Trenches. So way down by the 600. And Finbar goes to the lead from Mooka Manchi. In the third position, stylish last in a pocket. Mastigic wider out and Donna Natalia seemed to drop off very quickly. Fair embrace taken right to the outside now as they really churn through this turf and Trenches last. Into the stretch, the run comes for Stylish Lass, but in the meantime, Fair Embrace, about five off the rails, hits the lead, Mastigic goes to second and a couple to Stylish Lass, and then Donna Natalia, the rider draws the whip on Fair Embrace, and I refer to Darren Beatman. Stylish Lass on the inside is coming home doggedly, Fair Embrace is walking, Stylish Lass has got her, and Stylish Lass got up to win. Stylish Lass right through along the rails, beat Fair Embrace and Mastigic, followed by Trenches making up many lengths, Donna Natalia knocked up, so did Finbar, and uh, likewise for Mookie Manchi. Oh, gee, they've chopped into this track. Run. And that's about all on the race, to be honest. It's pretty hard to read the form out of any of these mm. races uh, on the inner track because certain horses like it and certain horses don't. Yeah. And uh, it's a bit hard to line up, except when you get back on the inner track again. Donna Natalie was set out well fancied yesterday. Uh, there you can see on the inside of trenches uh, with the number five saddle cloth going to the line there. Yeah. Um, yeah. In eight Republic last. And they're moving in here at Caulfield. The market, ha ha, and a dollar fifty, five twenty. Hosanna, hello, Pamela, sixteen nine sixty for Palais. Big odds for Moon Flute, um, sixteen. Sky Racing. Hello, rain uh, has been falling reasonably steadily for the last quarter of an hour. Yes, Moon Flute was last to leave the machine. The Queensland filly to Canny jump well. Ha ha, Omf and also Palais nicely away and four going for the lead. And they lead about two and a half lengths on Hose Pamela. Working to the side of the track at the 800 marker and De Canny the inside joining Palais. Omf in third position, two and a half to ha ha. Hosanna's going up quickly now. Republic last through on the inside as they jam up. Moon Flute is starting a run and Hello Pamela's last would only be seven lengths off the lead. Down towards the corner they run. 500 out now and De Canny the inside Palais in the middle three deep as Hosanna Moon Flute four wide ha ha behind those with Republic Lass Hello Pamela's gone to the outside and Oomph has dropped back sharply in the straight now down to the 250 there's about four in line Moon Flute going up very quickly to join Hosanna Palais on the inside has dropped off ha ha another two lengths away but it's Moon Flute Moon Flute 100 to go about a half length on Hosanna ha ha struggling to get to Moon Flute Beatman getting everything out of Moon Flute on the inside Hosanna kicking again but Moon Flute Moon Flute wins the Furious from Hosanna and Ha Ha Palais and then came Republic last hello Pamela De Canny and Oomph didn't handle the conditions and was last to complete the course uh, yes yeah, she was starting to do her best work over the last little bit Ha Ha and uh, well she might uh, be adept now it was six lengths ahead of Moon Flute at the 800 meter mark and then two lengths behind her at the 200 meter mark and then ahead at the post was the difference uh, between yeah. the two. A huge run from Ha Ha yesterday, who arguably didn't handle the track very well either. There was some conjecture as to whether she would yesterday. Yeah, I don't think she was as dominant on that track yesterday. It certainly wasn't one of Jimmy's best rides, but he was a bit of a victim of circumstance, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't be giving her away. She, she went to the line pretty well. Moonflute was a maiden uh, going into yesterday, a big effort yeah. to come. Zabil's Angel is a 97, and Viscount is a 97. Pastor Express, $44, Brave Prince, $29, Henderson Bay, $33, Mr. Bureaucrat, $770, La Bella Dama, $35, and Viscount, $3. I'm in Consul in the three straight years, 67, 68, 69. What about the King? Kingston Town, 80 and 81. But this year, the popular pick is the three-year-old Colt Viscount, number 12 at 260 and 150. Second elect is number eight. This time, Galliano dwelt Mr. Three Quarters of a Length, and Viscount from a whitish alley jumped with Gusto and is disputing the lead with Zabil's Angel and on type. The man is racing the other trio at a couple of lengths, Mr. Bureaucrat, and then Gano's last. Well, Munts had taken the New Zealand mare, Zabil's Angel, to a lead of a length on Viscount coming to the side. Three lengths to on type a length, Mr. Bureaucrat, and then comes the man. Two lengths, La Belladama on the inside of Brave Prince Henderson by Asia. 
Dottoressa. Over on the rail, three or four lengths to Galliano and two lengths to Pastor Express. They reach the 600 in the Chelmsford. And the leader is Zabil's Angel, a length on Viscount, a similar margin on type. Why to Mr. Bureaucrat, the man, the inside, and then the grey. Brave Prince followed by La Bella Dama, Dottoressa, Asia, and then Henderson Bay, Galliano, and Pastor Express straightening up. And Zabil's Angel in front, taken on by Viscount at on type. Why to Mr. Bureaucrat, Dottoressa looking for the way through, and the deepest is Brave Prince, Zabil's Angel at the 200. Viscount struggling to reach Zabil's Angel, but Brave Prince, here comes the grey. He put pay to them in one full swoop. Brave Prince race clear of Zabil's Angel and the man getting out, but Brave Prince in a boil over. Brave Prince beat the New Zealand mayor, Zabil's Angel. The man third from La Bella Dama, Viscount, Mr. Bureaucrat, Dottoressa. Then Asia on type, Galliano and Pastor Express and Henderson Bay was second last and last. Gee, he's been a good horse, Brave Prince, but strike me pink. Even uh, his most ardent admirer couldn't have imagined him winning the weight for race Chelmsford Stakes over 1,400 metres. But freshened up since Brisbane. Hadn't run since the Tats Cup. Sort of horse he is on his day. He can put a fantastic run in Joe. And sometimes he puts a bad run in. But, you know, we... ...start in Australia after winning three on the trot in New Zealand. And she might be worth following if she continues to progress in Sydney. Mm. Did you have any discussion about Viscount after the race? Yeah, mixed reviews about his performance yesterday. Uh, again, can it be put down to the track or was he simply disappointing? What did you think? I think this preparation, he hasn't been as, as impressive as he was last preparation, but he's, um, you know, he hasn't really got conditions to suit him yet, I don't think. So let's wait till he gets some, uh, some better conditions that suit him and the way he races. Mm. Women Dane, Kingsgate and juggling time. Market on the time-honoured tramway handicap. Ab initio, $14. L.A. Suez, $52. Diamond Dane, $5.30. And Juglin Gull, $3.80. Expertise, $4. Maitland Gull, $4.20. Expertise, $4.30. Number 10. Kutamutu and Maitland Gold. Passing this time, a nice level start to juggling time. Diamond Dane got out well, so did Kutamutu. National Saint at Ab Initio are up driving for the front spot, and Kingsgate trying to head them all off, followed by Maitland Gold, getting in behind the pace now. Length and a half, Kingsgate, and two and a half lengths to L.A. Suez in the tramway. They reach the 600, plenty of speed on here. National Saint about ahead, Kingsgate. Third, Ab Initio, fourth, hugging the rails, Kutamutu. Diamond Dane, three and four deep, and Maitland Gold is on the extreme outside. Kingsgate raced up to National Saint as they straighten and Kutamutu got a dream run between them. Diamond Dane to their outside and deeper still is Maitland Gold and then juggling time Chinoy Abinicio and expertise under the arches. Here's a deal Kutamutu and Diamond Dane from Maitland Gold. Kutamutu the inside and Diamond Dane. They'll battle it out. Maitland Gold is next but Diamond Dane hits the front from Kutamutu and Maitland Gold flying but Diamond Dane wins the tramway. Second, Maitland Gold. Third, Kutamutu. Then a photo for fourth. Juggling time with Chinoy and expertise. Kingsgate, L.A. Suez. A long margin to Ab Initio, National Saint Zantra, and Pleasure Giver last to complete the course. 364, 31064. The margins a long neck both ways. 11828, 3679. The Diamond Dane, his main target. Nine, the well, Diamond Dane, his main target is the Epsom handicap, in which he'll probably be weighted with around 53, 54 kilos, and he has to be considered a real chance uh, on that performance. Of course, last start he was narrowly beaten by Lonro, and it's good to mm. see that that form's stood up. Yep. Anyone had any doubts about Lonro coming out yeah. winning again yesterday? Kuda Mudu. Um, Probably didn't handle the slow conditions yesterday. He was uh, another good performance. I think that's about as as well as he goes, though. Yeah. Kudamudu. I think it's worth mentioning Maitland Gold's performance yesterday. A great Epsom trial. Uh, she had a pretty tough run, and she looked an absolute picture of health yesterday. She'll be tuned perfectly for the Epsom, yeah. no doubt. She's and honest. And given a firm track, I think she was just about one too. How well? Okay. Yeah. Um, he tries his best. He'll be in there a long way. Okay, Brad, good to see you, and good luck. You've got two nice rides. Thanks, so. Thanks, Al. Okay, Brad Rewilla, and now we go up and see the adorable, and the particularly sure, um, but it still it does look particularly well. Just in summing up, I've gone number 10, Miss Powerbird, ahead of six Shelbourne Lass, one Ponton Fly, and eight Poppet. All right, well, there are the thoughts of Alf Matthews for the Let's Elope. They are moving in here. I can report that on track, the best support has come for Poppet here, number eight, out of the Brian Mayfield Smith stable. Miss Powerbird. Set for the Let's Elope. Gates are back and they're off. A lovely start too. And Lady Marion and Kames are the first two to bounce out. 
Miss Powerbird got away well, so did Poppet on the outside, and Ponton Flyer is handy, and Love's Choice is up there in the mix as well. Past the 1,200, KMS the inside, and Poppet on the outside, leading by a length, Love's Choice, a length and a hand low leader, Star. Up the side of the course and pop it in front at the 800 a half to Love's Choice. A length and a half to Camus right up on the pace today. Third behind the leader coming towards the turn. Miss Powerbird is handy. Pot on flyer is deep. Two Lady Marion flushed. Shelburne Lass is also wide but with cover from Pot on flyer. Then Janeth and Lady Marion. Rain Dance Lady. Carbrasel Curta here and Lolita Star. They swing the corner and the let's elope at the 500. Pop at the inside. Love's Choice and Pot on flyer. They're leading Camus. Then Miss Powerbird called on by Childs and Shelburne last down the outside and Camus is searching for a run at the 300 metres now. Pont on flyer hit the lead. Miss Powerbird's after her and Flushed is running a big race coming home and then Love's Choice and Shelburne last from Lolita Star. Flushed is diving through on the inside. A hundred to go with Miss Powerbird. It's Flushed and Miss Powerbird now. Lolita Star flying home but Flushed in front and Flushed has won it by a length. Miss Powerbird and Lolita Star. Then Pont on flyer fourth followed by Curta here. Carbrasel loves Shoy Shelburne Lass. Back behind these mares to finish in the race. Rain Dance Lady and KMS and then Tanith. And towards the end are Lady Marion and Poppet, who's tied badly in the run home. If you might have found her, but uh, I think she's probably always been one who's appreciated the sting out of the ground. Race after good race, and I think anyone during the spring carnival could be confident to put Noel on and know that you're going to get a good ride in the race. There he is driving flush to the lead. And uh, Ken Keyes, the trainer, has a Caulfield Cup hopes for Flushed. I met Caulfield Cup hopes for Flushed. I met uh, an old Callow's... Um, uh, a great first up run in that race from Lolita Star, Keith. It was. It was an eye-catcher. And uh, she's back to her best. She was struggling a bit in the autumn over in Adelaide, but uh, she'll win um, a nice race down here in the spring. Look, it's a repetitive phrase of the morning, isn't it, Joe? Great run here, great run there. We're in for a super spring. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot to look forward to. From today onwards. Joe, she's in the Epsom, you know, it just sort of depends on what she does today, I suppose, compared to that, or if not, she'll just go to Melbourne. Okay. Yeah. Good luck today with Arabia. Thanks. Okay. Hi, Joe. An important engagement for her, the research stakes, and she's the favourite at around $2.70. On the Ascot Vale stakes at Flemington, which is still black diamond colours, here's Batula about to come up to the line now. She's big odds, Batula at $42.00. Abyssinian in the meantime comes in. Not too far away from a start now, just the last few three. They 43 from the Ascot Vale, unable to be loaded. Bookmakers rule a line, a betting announcement will follow the running of the race. And so now they stand in. They're off. North Boy began well in the middle of the line with Euston off and they're coming to the grandstand with Abyssinian Spectatorial. Behind them is Malagra Miss and Juan Mo as they settle into stride and run through the first 200 metres of the Ascot Vale. Over on the flat side of the course now and away quickly with Strategic Image moving up on the outside with New Key. Gantry is in behind them racing erratically. He's being followed then by King of Prussia who's got into a good position behind the leading horses and then Classic Cut and Lilo Lillers last of the horses down on the flat side right and the lights indicating they have the lead in the early stages. Coming up to the 600 now and Abyssinian on the grandstand in company with North Boy show the way ahead of Euston off Malagra Miss and Spectatorial right behind them and they're followed by Juan Mo over on the flat side now and Strategic Image has got a big lead of about three lengths over New Key and King of Prussia's called on to make his finishing run coming towards the 300 and on the grandstand it's North Boy from Spectatorial and Euston off Strategic Image in front of New Key and King of Prussia on the flat side but North Boy's in front, I'd say. North Boy on this grandstand rail in front from Euston off and New Key on the far side, but North Boy all too good and wins it from Euston off. Photo finish for third. Malagra missed this side. New Key winning the flat side over there ahead of King of Prussia. They were followed in then by Juan Mo and Spectatorial. Back over on the inside was Strategic Image followed by Classic Cut, Gantry and Raja Lane. And uh, Lilo Little's finished distance on the flat side of the course with Abyssinian well back on the grandstand side. You've gone uh, to the outside. That was obviously a plan. There was good speed there. How did you feel through it? 
Uh, really good. He, I was surprised to touch how quick he went, the horse. He showed really good speed. Pretty much left it to Damien. I mean, um, there's no better rider at the moment in the form that he's in. And uh, and he walks tracks beautifully. And, and when he was happy to go out there, we were happy to go out there. It's a remarkable story, this one. What's the future? She's blown him away today. He, he's, he's, uh, he's he's blown him away today. Yes, well, we, he's, his aim is the uh, Caulfield Guineas. Yeah. Um, and to see it happen was fantastic. Well done to you, mate. Um, all right, there. Yeah, any more winners today? Very uh... confident that he will run the mile. The Caulfield Guineas now his main target. Richard, no doubt you have an opinion on this horse. I don't have an opinion other than he's a very good little horse. But I'll tell you what, Ascot Vale Stakes winners don't have a huge record recently in the um, in the Guineas. It seems to be the horse that can come up this early in the spring and uh, and be sprinting at this level, then finds it difficult to uh, to train on and run the Guineas mile and beyond. So um, it's another one of those hoodoo races. It comes up early in the spring. A lot of the time the winner doesn't go on. But I tell you what, this is a very strong professional little racehorse. But geez, I'm down on straight racing. I mean, you have a look at that. The outside division were clearly in front. I think the first three or even four came down the outside. Straight racing to me is an absolute enigma. It just takes out the chances of half the horses. Now, if you draw an inside gate, and uh, decide to go to the inside. I know they can all come to the outside, but even if you're on an inside gate and a horse outside you decides to go to the, the inside rail, you have to go with it. You can't, uh, you can't virtually knock it out of the way. I just think it's got huge problems for uh, owners, trainers and jockeys. If you don't end up on the right side of the course, your chances virtually go down the tubes, and, and I, I just don't think that's good racing. If our group is engaged, now the Sky Ratings, in a flurry at 100, Acker Bilk at 93, Um Rum at 90, Native Jazz at 83. Here's the market here, I'll slip through them. And it's Ty the Knot a scratching, he was pricked uh, during the week and uh, has a nasty foot injury and it could be the end of his present campaign. 31 Sky Heights, 370 Um Rum, 34 Freemason, 31 Karpstad Way, 19 King Kaitel, $8.10 Acker Bilk, 9.30 for Native Jazz. Over to Universal Prince, $11. Sir Clive, oh, down to Scenic Warrior. He's under double figures at 9.50 and in a flurry at $4. Ten minutes to the Craig Lee. And Sir Clive to come along. What a field it is. Anyone of four or five in this field could end up being the favourite for the Melbourne Cup. The likes of Freemason, Universal Prince, Sale of Century, Native Jazz, Carpstad Way. It's a, just a super field, but the specialist miler, Amram, is just the favourite ahead of Inner Flurry. She too is by Zabir going in. Sky Heights are set, so they're ready for the Craig Lee. And Umrum pinged away brilliantly down on the inside and he leads in a flurry. Karpstad way and Dakabilk in the early stages. Scenic Warrior improving wide out to fifth and they're followed by Native Jazz over on the inside. Sir Clover's booting up around Big Pat who's handy a midfield of century on the rail. Umrum controlling the tempo of the Craig Lee. Led going past the 800 metres from Sir Clive out wide and Scenic Warrior in the centre. Carpstad way right behind them and Acker Bilks had a good trail in the race. Followed by in a flurry, Big Pat pulled out and then Native Jazz over on the rail. Worse than midfield cornering. And they were followed by Freemason, King Kaitel, Universal Prince, Sale of Century and Sky Heights are a long way back as they cornered. Where Umrum rolled off the fence and Carpstad way got right through on the inside and Native Jazz got up there as well. Wider out is Sir Clive and there followed then by Ackerbilk down the outside. Scenic Warrior is struggling and then Sale of Century. Native Jazz is the leader at the 200 from Carpstad Way. Umrum and Ackerbilk coming home down the outside. Native Jazz in front though from Umrum, Carpstad Way, Ackerbilk. 100 to go and it's uh, Native Jazz clear and Native Jazz. Native Jazz beats Ackerbilk. Universal Prince flashing home. Sale of Century fourth and then Umrum, Carpstad Way. Back behind them, King Kaitel, Freemason, Inner Flurry, Big Pat and Scenic Heights, uh, Sky Heights rather, and they were trailed then towards the tail of the field by Sir Clive, and uh, back at the tail end here is Scenic Warrior. Do you sort of feel at that stage? It was pretty good to see him a, bit, a little bit closer today, knowing that the horse can finish a little bit, and he, he just had a bit of luck coming through. He's, he's giving him a beautiful ride, got the right run at the right time, and he just he quickened at the right time. Sandown was good. He got up on the inside, probably on a track that uh, the inside few were making runs, but he's, he's continued that improvement today. Yes, yes. He's he obviously come on from Sandown and, and really happy with what stage he's at. Now, we heard a few uh, through the week about the way... Um, Lloyd Williams and Miles Plum 
uh, must be feeling pretty happy this morning. Here's a horse who, who had enough dash about him to win a mile race, and we know for sure he can run two miles. That's right, Tappy, um, and Lloyd Williams has two Melbourne Cup uh, trophies on his mantle already. Uh, he phoned me this morning at 7 o'clock to uh, tell uh, Sky viewers the program for, um, for the horse. It's the Underwood Stakes, the Turnbull Stakes, Caulfield Cup, McKinnon, and hopefully the Melbourne Cup. So it's a traditional path. Uh, he said the horse pulled up well this morning, and he feels that he had to make four or five uh, lengths improvements since the autumn and he feels that he's on that right track. Would you agree he's a, a much stronger horse now, Richard? Yeah, I think he's a, a very strong star. He's doing everything right. Um, traditionally, the Craig Lee, if you win it, it has been a, uh, a, a hoodoo. The horse that wins it often has not gone on, and it's the horses that have been good runs behind the winner and placed in the race that have had better records later in the spring. But uh, look, Native Jazz can only do what he's been doing, and that's winning. And uh, he, it was a very good run in the... Uh, in the Liston Stakes, and uh, he's come out and confirmed that with a good win in the Craig Lee. Well, here he is going to the line strongly at the end of uh, uh, 1,600 metres. He'll be back at the same track, but at twice the distance on, uh, on Melbourne Cup Day, but we saw uh, that he, um, in the Adelaide Cup, that he can stay. Mm. Lloyd Williams likes, likens him a bit to uh, Just a Dash, who won an Adelaide Cup and, of course, a Melbourne Cup. Yeah, he's a, he's a very strong star. If you've had him in the doubles already, you'd be pretty happy. I did like the run of Universal Prince. I thought that was a sensational run. He came from well back, rattled home. Place getters in the Craig Lee have got a huge record of having great springs in Melbourne. So I reckon there's three or four we'll have to look at out of that race, Rich. And Umrum battled on very well for a horse who had to face the breeze, and, uh, and he kept battling on, finished in the first half dozen. He hung out down the straight, Umrum. Did you notice Darren Biedman switched the whip to his right hand about 100 metres mm. out? Yeah. Back to Universal Prince at what? Because of his penchant for the two-mile trip, the longer journeys later, uh, $12 at this stage. Uh, Carfstad Way, ridden probably too close to the lead yesterday. He's a bit fresh and he just jumped out and got going, didn't he? Uh, Northerly, 14, King Kaitel, he was making up good ground close to home in the Craigley. In a flurry, pulled hard yesterday, $17, hit the roof, never got a dollar. He shares favouritism with Universal Prince. Carfstad Way, very prominent. Oh, he's been threatening the winner. A major right. yeah. Group 1 in Australia for so long, hasn't he? Yeah. Sale of Century 21, the that second mortgage. That was 21. a good run yesterday too, Sale of Century. Wasn't it a good Bulls. run? And Sorrento has moved up as well. Sorrento set, having its first start for David Hall. Now out in 10, dash for cash. Princesa ready. They're working here on Showerheart. Best tried in the race have been two horses drawn to come down the outside. Sadurka, which will run favourite. And at longer odds, Calm Smites has been very well supported on the side rail without any problem. Showerheart, unfortunately, might have drawn the wrong side of the straight again. And they're off. And Lazagaletta a little slow again out wide. And Sadurka bounced out with Princesa Dash for cash. Sorrento got away fast. And Scenic Peak is right up with the leading horses. Calm Smiter is settling towards the tail of the horses down this side. And Roxar is showing pace well away from the rail. The 600 on the grandstand side now. And it's Scenic Peak on the outside rail in company with Roxar. Princesa a handy third. And Sadurka right behind them. Dash for cash, the grey whitest of that division. And they were well clear of Calm Smiter. And then Sorrento and Lazagaletta last on the grandstand side. It's Bomberbill in front on the flat side from Brothers Jess Slalom and Showerhart is getting a run through and is coming home hard on the flat side rail at the 200 metre mark on the grandstand. Dash for cash is after Scenic Peak. Scenic Peak is in front on this side. It's Scenic Peak about a length and a half clear from Dash for cash and Scenic Peak beats Dash for cash and Calm Smites a Sadurka and Roxar. Showerhart clearly first home on the flat side, but not in the hunt. He beat Fubu and Slalom on that division. Back behind these, Lazagaletta over on the grandstand rail in company with Sorrento. Back over on the flat, Fubu made some ground late, followed by Brothers Jess down the alarm. Bomberbill tied after leading up. Princesa towards the end of that uh, division of horses. And Gowan's bending was well back there also. On the outside, number 15, Scenic Peak, at point seven. 18.7 is a very, very good gallop. A glacier holds the record here at 17.1. 15 and a dead heat between 9 and 12. Uh, this is fellow, a scenic four-year-old, has won seven from 11, and he's won four in a row, starting with a class three three-year-old back in February at uh, Durban. 
He went to Toowoomba and won in May. To Mrs. David Haynes because they look to be the Kingston Town Colours. But the winner is owned by D and Mrs. C. Steinbeck and are described here as gold with red stripe sleeves. Uh, the David Haynes. What concerns me about this race is the entire outside division virtually finished in front of the entire inside division. And for, that much, to, for there to be that much discrepancy between the inside and the outside rails as far as the, uh, the conditions that they were racing, whether that's the going or whether that's uh, the wind conditions or a combination of the two, I don't know. But it's not good for racing when half the field had their chances eliminated by the, the mere fact that they drew the wrong gates and had to go to the wrong side of the track. Yep. In fairness, uh, Richard, uh, there was a major... That race, like... if there's good speed on, it will certainly put him in there. The four, Gerald Ryan's horse looked well. He's got 11 alley. Um, you know, this is a horse that's... Uh, well, he's, he showed a fair bit and looks as though... OK, they're about to move up for the Group 2 gloaming stakes. This is the feature race of the day here at Rose Hill Gardens and Accelerator is all the rage. Gates are back and they're off. And the favourite got the best of the jump accelerator. Full limit away nicely and the same for Silk Vale and going up quickly as Puzzle Book. Industrial Fan not far away and Kavwasi are very wide out. Silk Vale to the lead as they swing the first corner opens up two lengths Puzzle Book. Similar margin Kavwasi are around accelerator. Silver Bar and the Groan is the clear cut leader as they work their way to the 800. A length and a half in fact. A length and three quarters now on Puzzle Book. One away third is Silk Vale and a length further back is Kavwasi. Accelerator lost a little bit of ground and going past him full limit on the inside. Resoundingly he's on the outside of Evander from El Maha pure speed. An absolute is industrial fan. They work their way to the 550 and Silver Baron a length and a half puzzle book. Silk Veiled back into third. Posse and Kavwasia is fourth and Accelerator going to the extreme outside from Evander. Setting sail for the judge in the gloaming and puzzle book goes to Silver Baron and Kavwasia joining in and says Accelerator full limit is behind those with Silk Veiled and then resoundingly, 200 out now, and Kavwasia is a clear-cut leader. Accelerator can't get him at the moment, and then puzzle book, but Kavwasia races away for Glen Boss. The gloaming is all over. It's Kavwasia winning it from Accelerator. Photo third, Silk Veil, probably from puzzle book, and resoundingly wide out. And then came Silver Baron, full limit, followed home by a Vander, and then pure speed industrial fan at Al Maha was last to complete the course. High priced yearling, and uh, he hasn't been uh, getting any rave reviews uh, over the last couple of months, but did now. Yeah, I thought the, uh, the writing was on the wall last start, I thought. I, I asked Graham if I could write him really quiet, because um, I've written him a lot of work and I have written him in a few races, and I always had in the back of my mind that if I, if I could write him quiet, he might be able to produce a good finish, and he did that last. Of the gloaming, you know. An interesting comment made by Glenn Boss yesterday regarding Accelerator. Um, I don't think he's come back at all, the horse. It'll um, be interesting to see what they do with him uh, as the spring carnival progresses. But Clavassier, you know, realised his potential yesterday. And Glenn, again, another interesting comment when he meets the better three-year-olds, because I don't think it was the strongest race yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Richard, he may not have just taken the next step. Well, I, I think he's probably a horse. Yes, you, you're probably right. Now, he was a very good two-year-old, and, and some two-year-olds don't don't uh, continue on into their three-year-old year. Look, he's not, he hasn't run a bad race. He's just kept well, running I mean, pretty the, good races. The owners are getting an earn, but the exactly. putters are, are being gutted. That was his sixth successive defeat when favourite. I mean, yeah. how much more can we take? We, well, you can't, you he can't get a kick in a stampede. He with doesn't the, tell you to send him out favourite. The putters right, decide on that. Oh, you can't play the horse for that's that. almost. For a top rater and a big win dividend of $14. Higher, 97, Spinning Hill, 97, Make Mine Magic, 97. The full market now on uh, a very interesting race. The Theo Mark, Shogun Lodge, 870, Crawl, $22, Higher, 840. Spinning Hill, very short uh, from the number one barrier, 240. Final Fantasy, 32. Make Mine Magic, 740, Belle du Jour, 14. Nanny Maroon is out. 23, Matter of Honour, 101, Knickerbocker Kid, 21 adamantly, 21 elching. It's great. No, he can't come. Shogun Lodge, 840, uh, 690 higher, $3 spinning hill, 570 for the Queenslander Make Mine Magic.
OK, I think we're set now to take you to Ian Craig for his call of the Theo Mark Stakes. Dollars a win, $1.40 the place. The second elect is number six, and that's Make Mine Magic. The grey from the Gold Coast, $5.90 and two twenty. And the third elect on tab limited is number three, and that's higher at six eighty and two four. This race last year, beating Land Sighting and Shogun Lodge. They're ready and set to go. They're off this time in the Theo Marks, and one of the best out was Matter of Honor commencing well for Wadi. Spinning Hill from the inside is right there. Build is a length, the crawl, a similar margin, Shogun Lodge, and two to normal practice. Down the side they come, arriving at the 800. Matter of Honor, a length and a half on Adamantly. A length for Wadi, a length and a half to make my magic between Restless Wide. Spinning Hill cluttered away, and then Al Tiro, Knickerbocker Kid from Belle de Jour. One to higher final fantasy, make me a miracle, and then crawl on the fence. Second last is Shogun Lodge and two lengths to normal practice. Coming up to the bend, 500 out in the Theo Marks and Matter of Honor, the Nova Castrian. A length and a half clear on adamantly. Fawadi, the rails from Belle de Jour. Spinning Hill almost into the clear. Make Mine Magic holding her in though. And then Al Tiro and Knickerbocker Kid from Shogun Lodge. Crawl and higher. Matter of Honor in front. 200 metres to go. Belle de Jour getting the inside run. Fawadi, Make Mine Magic and Shogun Lodge is seeing daylight. Here's a go. Shogun Lodge through the middle. Oh, super. Shogun Lodge beat Fawadi, Belle de Jour, not far away, crawl with Spinning Hill unlucky, and then came higher, make mine magic, further off, Knickerbocker Kid, Matter of Honor pulled up quickly from adamantly, El Tiro, restless final fantasy, make me a miracle, and normal practice was last. Well, that's called, and normal practice was last. Well, that's what a quality horse will do. 1,300 metres short of his best, second up from a spell, he was dreadfully in need of a run past the 350 but the run presented itself and G Boss the rider of the day is uh, nothing oh. short of sensational that's the way to ride him well, I don't think I've seen you this elated no. in a long time uh, I haven't certain sometimes but uh, that's sensational what a absolutely ride. great ride but that's the way the horse has to be ridden he's got the fastest furlong of any horse in this country were you elected to run him today as opposed to last week and it's been, well, a winning move to say the least, isn't it? Well, it was. It was a big ask today with the 60 kilos, the 12 marble. I mean, you know, I knew he'd be back last or second last, but I just said to Glenn, just ride him for luck, just ride him for luck. And, he, and if, he, if he's held up to the last 200, he'll still win. With bigger riches in mind, this is the sort of performance you want to have from him? As long as he keeps riding him quiet. Okay. Good on you, Bob. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Well, 157.30 and the trifecta 4,044. Eight. You could watch another yeah. hundred races and you wouldn't see that happen again. To think that there wasn't one tiny little thing uh, to uh, deter his progress. Here's Glenn with... Really, um, we just decided with the 60 kilos, Bob and I, we were just going to ride him for a lot of luck. And, you know, he, he just felt uh, through the week on Thursday, I said to Bob, he's probably worked as good as he ever has in his life. And Bob said, oh, it's a big statement. I said, well, I'm telling you, he just works so good. Um, he just had to have a luck in running, and um, he, he produces those sort of phenomenal finishes that he's, uh, he can, he's probably not many horses that are capable of doing what he does. Well, Bob, I don't think there was a... One, he was at double figure odds uh, yesterday. Uh, he's a super horse. He, he seems to have been around forever, but he's only five rich. Yeah, I think Glenn Boss took some significant risks here on uh, Shogun Lodge. At any time, those gaps could have closed, and he could have been bailed up behind a wall of horses, but... He's on a very, very good horse with a great turn of foot. He's got great acceleration, Shagon Lodge. And when the gaps come, he's good enough to be able to take them. And that's the difference between Shagon Lodge and, and most other horses racing. And uh, look, a, a thoroughly deserved win. He's carried the big weight and done it. It could have easily all ended in tears, but it didn't. Yeah. And, uh, you know, winners are grinners. Well, he's been at the top and raced down. Uh, um, no luck yesterday for Spinning, spinning Hill, Graham, oh, yeah, that favourite in the race. Yeah. Um, heaps of traffic in the finish. So yeah. Joe, everybody, every form talk I heard yesterday morning said, Barrier One, oh, won't yeah. she get a lovely run Probably from there? Ended up being it a was nightmare. a death trap. Yeah. <laughs> she was never out of traffic. Yeah. Mm. I know that horse that you love higher in a big race yesterday. Yeah, he got squeezed up 80 or 90 metres out, but he's mm. always... There's always something happening to hire, isn't there? Hire. <laughs> um, yeah. Belle de Jour. The Cap and the sky ratings are with Maitland Gold. From Phoenix Park, Lord Essex and Nanny Marone. 7, 1, 2, 3 are the ratings. And that pool, we've been watching it build up throughout the day. It's now at $222,000.
and still 14 minutes to go. So they're in for a big one, Newcastle. Fenny for 62, Lawyer 100, 14 for Tier. Expertise for Move, Eddie. That's six to move up. Current favourite is Maitland Gull, number seven, 390, ahead of number three, Nanny Maroon, 440. And number one, Phoenix Park, is $5.90. They're the three that are under the double figures currently on Tab Limited. Xantra, Nanny Maroon, along with Four Bill and Lawyer, are the four horses to move in. Maitland Gold drawn on the fence. Phoenix Park, nice and handy. And they're off in the Cameron Handicap, a great start in Phoenix Park and uh, Kingsgate, two of the best to commence away. Very well was Ab Initio. Maitland Gull nice and handy with Zabin. Four Bellas last. They race along to the 900 and Phoenix Park, a clear cut leader from Zabin. Maitland Gull nice and handy third, followed closely by Impregnable and Ab Initio. Two lengths to Kingsgate and Kutamutu, Lord Essex and then Glen Rowan, followed by Juggling Time. Then the Coffs Harbour Galloper, Johan Lover. Two lengths away next is Tier from X. Expertise and Zantra and a couple to Nanny Maroon with two behind her. They are Lawyer and Four Bill. They're on the turn, 4.50 to go and the Cameron Handicap. Phoenix Park leads them around the corner. Three quarters of a length out of vein. A length of Maitland Gold away from the rails and is coming after the two leaders. And then Kingsgate followed two back by Kutamutu and Nanny Maroon with four behind her. Phoenix Park down inside the 200 taken on by Zedavane and Kingsgate is joining in. Maitland Gold is next but Kingsgate G Boss, Kingsgate exploded away, and Kingsgate wins the Cameron. Lord Essex got up for second, Maitland Gold third. Nanny Maroon flew from tears out of Anglen, Rowan Expertise. Johan Lover followed by Lawyer Kutamutu, Phoenix Park. And then Abenesio followed the juggling time, Zantra for Bill, and Impregnable was last to complete the course. Well, here he comes, folks. Glen Boss, riding for Gay Waterhouse and Star Thoroughbreds on Kingsgate taking out the big one of the day and let's confirm the tapes for you before we go out to your call before we go out to your call here's Ian right Terry 170 Magic Albert 280 Viscount and 1110 for Viking Ruler 1480 for Prince of Play up this time Nice even break it was to Sakan de Mon and a Viscount away quickly, as was Magic L, but Prince of Play not far off. And then comes the way down to the thousand marker in the spring three year old stakes and Viscount sets up the pattern about a length and a quarter clear on Magic Albert, a length and a half to Ken Morrow. A neck to Prince of Play on the outside and two lengths to Candamon. Next to last in the field as they come along the side, Storm Force and Viking Ruler brings up the rear back about nine lengths from Viscount, who at the 650 is a half length on Magic Albert, but Chris Munts on Magic Albert is not letting Rodney Quinn on Viscount Dick take terms to suit himself. Three lengths, third is Ken Morrow, Prince of Players, fourth, and then comes Storm Force, Sakandamon and Viking Ruler, homeward bound, and Magic Albert is turning loose now, and Magic Albert races up to Viscount to nose him. Three or four lengths to Storm Force, and then Prince of Play and Viking Ruler, but Magic Albert down to the 175. He's having a hard job to get away from Viscount. These two top three-year-olds, Magic Albert and Neck in front, Viscount will not give in, but Magic Albert is holding him nearing the wire, and Magic Albert takes it out from Viscount. Third posse going to Viking Ruler. Storm Force was fourth, then Prince of Play, Sakandamon, and last of all was Ken Morrow. Well, the two top horses in the race fought it out. A great struggle between these. By two and a half. Thank you. Right. At 100, Firm 90, Deprave 87 and Ugachaka at 83. On the Colin Hayes Stakes, Firm, a Darren Gauchy Mount, 6.20, Feel the North Dean, Ugachaka, $4. Ugachaka is the top pick in the race, though, and has been well supported ahead of La Laguna, a race uh, that punters here think will be uh, mainly dominated by the Phillies. Third pick in the race is Firm, who's another Firm, who's 
Another few and away they go at the 1200 metres. And missing the start was Feel the Noise. And soon after the jump here, Sir Chuckle pounced on the front ahead of Deprave and Firm, who got away quickly and settled down third. Perrata's Niwon, Yuga Chark as well back. Got only about three behind it, running up the side, including Dragila. And then the tallies at the end of the field. Tally Thunder out wide and Tally Zest on the rail. Up the side they race, passing the 600 metres. And it's Sir Chuckle narrowly in front of Firm, a link to Peladama, deep out to a third placing. Clasely followed in the field by Deprave. La Laguna's off the track around the outside of Feel the Noise. And back behind them, finishing school on the inside. And then Dragila. Yuka Chaka's second last, peeling out wide as they corner. We're firm dash to the lead. It's firm from Sir Chuckle. Deprave is running on. Down the outside comes La Lagoon. Firm in front. Deprave after it, followed by La Lagoon. And a break to Yuka Chaka. Across the track with Deprave hitting the lead from firm. La Lagoon lifting late. Deprave ran out in front of it, but has won. Deprave first. Firm might grab second the inside of La Lagoon. Making great ground late was Yuka Chaka and Tully Zeal was an eye catcher flashing home along the inside further back in the field. As if uh, anything came of this. Alright, Eagle Farm, late oh. Burn, he, no. Brave Chief, 33 Weasel Will, 18 Walk on Ice, 39 Ekalaka, 17, Sir Clive, 26 Sunline, $1.30 Matriculate, 57 A small but select field in the John F. Fian Stakes. Right, John, the first meeting of these two great horses, the champion Sunline and the West Australian Star Northerly. They've drawn alongside one another and there has been support at longer odds for Sir Clark. Could we get the match race that uh, was spoken of earlier in the week before Northerly turned in a poor track get up here on Tuesday? The betting suggests we might Sunline the favourite Northerly well supported as the second elect in this the thing. And Sunline won the jump on the inside ahead of Northerly. Walk on ice and Brave Chief are away fast and are going forward. As they settle down now, it's Sunline narrowly staying off the rail. Walk on ice is testing the champion mare in the early part and runs to the lead with Brave Chief on the outside. A length and a half to Northerly settling down fourth on the yellow cutters, followed by... Okay. They've gone quickly in the run to the turn at the 800 metres. Walk on ice by about a length here to Brave Chief second and Sunline on the inside third. Northerly's moved up outside her now within a half length of Sunline and Sir Clive came wider. Then came Matriculate, Weasel, Will and Ekalaka two lengths away. Eight or nine lengths would cover the field. Walk on ice by two lengths. Sunline, Brave Chief gone and Sunline can come out after Walk on ice now. There's Sir Clive let loose quickly and it's gone up on the outside of Northerly and then Weasel Will picking up ground but Charles hit the button and Sunline responded and sprinted to the lead Sir Clive goes with her, he's a length away three lengths then to Northerly and Weasel Will, Sunline has given full bore and she accelerates magnificently, the champion mares put three lengths on them, into the straight Sunline, Northerly gives chase then came Weasel Will but Sunline two lengths in front, Northerly's answering, Sunline by a length and a quarter Northerly's lifting, the champion in West Australian lunch, got her! Sunline has been beaten. Northerly's grabbed her right on the line. Northerly's won from Sunline. Sir Clive, I think, was third. And then Weasel Will trailed by Matriculate and Ekalaka, Brave Chief and Walk on Ice. Then to Northerly and Weasel Will. Sunline has given full bore and she accelerates magnificently. The champion mares put three legs on them into the straight. Sunline Northerly gives chase. Then came Weasel Will but Sunline two lengths in front. Northerly's answering. Sunline by a length and a quarter. Northerly's lifting. The champion West Australian lunge. Got her! Sunline has been beaten. Northerly's grabbed her right on the line. Northerly's won from Sunline. Sir Clive, I think, was third. And then Weasel Will trailed by Matriculate and Ekalaka, Brave Chief, and Walk on Ice. What a race. What a superb race. Northerly's they stunned Fred Kersley. Well, I was concerned in the run, I must tell you. I was talking about him being a bit fresh, but he looked flat in the run, and I mm. thought, boy, he's doing it tough. But his courage is fantastic and to pull back a horse like Sunline she got a bit of luck around about the three or four hundred getting inside him and he had to go around and I actually thought he was gone I'll be honest with you but um geez I'm so proud of him and this is really not completely wound up you told us before the race Fred how good is this horse I, d I don't know really you know but I, I, I am concerned he raced flat I mean, I actually said to Damien he could drive a race a bit today because I think he's fresh. Now, that just shows you what I don't know. So I don't know how good he is.
Well, I mean, the comment is... Fred Kersley, who is the trainer of the new king of the turf here in Melbourne. Northerly, good morning, Fred. Good morning, Keith. How would your champ pull up this morning? Yeah, he's pretty well. I'm very happy with him this morning. Well, he did something that no one thought possible yesterday, didn't he? He gave Sunline five length start at the home turn and gunned him down. He looked doubtful of running a place coming to the home turn, Fred. Oh, I've got to say, I was very worried in the, in the run. I've, I've not seen him off the bit so far out ever. And he chased hard and... Um, it was very thrilling in the end when he ran her down, but um, he didn't travel as well in the run as I would have liked. We were so surprised uh, after the race, Fred, uh, that you said uh, Northley wasn't 100% happy on that racing surface yesterday, yet he beat Sunline. Well, you know, I, I said that because he made hard work of it, um, and I think in the end it was just his courage that got him home. He, um, he pulled out plenty when he had to. Right. OK, back to you, Shadow. Congratulations. Norley was clearly under pressure nearing the home turn. How did you feel at that stage, knowing that Sunline probably had a three or four break on you? Yeah, I was a bit concerned because when uh, a mare like Sunline kicks and puts a gap on you like that, not too often you pick her up, but, uh, you know, he's a great horse and it was a fantastic race. You know, it certainly stirred my heart up. You would have heard the roar too when Sunline kicked and you started to come. People realised that this was the battle that everyone wanted. He was starting to hit top gear, my horse, when he straightened up and I thought, oh, I've a chance of getting her. I only needed to come back on me a bit and she did and the last 50 he was finishing all over and, uh, you know, it was, as I said, it was, it was a great... A great finish and it was really exciting that the crowd really got involved and uh, it was wonderful. And all this probably about 80% fit? Yeah, well he's definitely going to improve, um, you know, and he's, he's got around the track okay. Um, so yeah, there are some great clashes these Bring days. on the Cox Plate? Well yeah, I mean, I'm not riding off Sunline yet, don't worry, she's a great mare. And, uh, but it's good to have a great horse to finally challenge her. We've had a, a little bit of a, you know, a lack in depth in our great mm. horses mm. in the last few years I think. And this horse looks like he's ready to step up and take her on. It must have been... Makers reacted to his win over Sunline yesterday. He's now joint favourite for the Cox Plate. He's 12 to 1 for the Caulfield Cup. And he's even into the betting now in the Melbourne Cup at 20 to 1. Can you rule out any of those races? No, not really. Um, I mean, I guess you start with the Melbourne Cup and say that's unlikely, most unlikely because he's not eligible as I understand it. Um, but the Caulfield Cup I wouldn't rule out. Um, I, I have to give that strong consideration and... Um, I'll take it as it comes, I think. Fred, how does that, just take into consideration what we've seen and what we've discussed here this morning, um, how does that win of Northerly's rate uh, in his performances so far when you consider his Australian Cup victory and what have you? Uh, the, the sunline factor, I think, is outstanding. Yeah. Um, I think his, his actual run in the Australian Cup was better. I mean, that, to do it tough and break the track record, um, you know, that stands out in my mind. I think the, the Sunline factor, I mean, she owns the track and she's such a great horse for him to be, you know, matched alongside her and in the end to be able to tip her out. I think that, that's something that will stay in your memory for a long time. Greg Childs. Um, look, she's, again, we're telling everyone, she's here for the Cox Plate. Um, just like Northerly, and he beat us today. But um, we have improvement in Sunline, and I'm sure Northerly has as well. So it's going to be a great race. Everyone should get here for the Cox Plate. I thought it was very good. Uh, he was quite... ...ahead of Flushed, Madame Plume and Tickle My. Uh, market, Yuma Line, 42, Noir Sur, 56, Tickle My, 360, Lady Marion, 790, Flushed, 710, Bumbelina, 580, Madame Plume, 13, and Summer Rule, $19. 53, Quietly Adamant, Scratch, 10. Cur de Hare, 18, Twot Riff, at 8... Brother John getting ready here for the stock stakes. Group 3 race for the Bears. Mooney Valley still the bars after a tickle my favourite. The best tried on track clearly has flushed. Been very well supported. And flash jumped away okay down on the inside. Hot riff written out looking for the lead. Away fast as Lady Marion and Tickle Myers jumped quickly and is going to be on the pace today. They put 200 behind them. Hot riff narrowly from Lady Marion. Tickle My deep out around Curta here. Two and a half to Flush, followed by Noir Seer. Two to Bumbelina, quietly adamant. One to Yuma Line. Summer rule, Madame Plume. And then Tyrolee and Blab and Rakina last of all as they negotiate the 800 turn. Hot riff in front by a neck to Lady Marion. A length and a half Curta here. Tickle My perfectly poised. Fourth the outside. Then Flush Bumbelina. Bumbelina and Yuma Line starting a quick run as they went by the school. Then Noir Sear over on the inside and Madame Plume starting a run. Summer Rule is battling. Tyrolene gets moving up towards the turn. Hot Riff gone.
on. Lady Marion hit the lead. Flushed and tickled my challenge strongly. Then Bumbelina. Madame Plumes running on strongly in the lime green cap. Lady Marion narrowly from tickle my flushed around the turn. Tyrolene making ground and Madame Plume. Lady Marion into the straight by three quarters. Tickle my flushed. And then came Madame Plume and Tyrolene. But Lady Marion kicked away by a length and a half. Tickle my's lifting late. Lady Marion by a length. She holds them out. And Lady Marion unbeaten at the valley in three beats. Tickle my. Tyrolene might have grabbed third from flushed Rassi. And Madame Plume didn't go on. Blab made ground. So did Rakina. Bumbelina just battled home. Hot riff weakened and then quietly adamant. Summer rule. Yumaline and Curta here last in. A Brett Preble. Yeah, good. Yeah, she really finds the line, but um, lovely run, Bartsmere. Caulfield Cup. I think she is, yeah. Like she, it only looks like she's just started to get settled into Melbourne, um, that way of going. But um, she's a half-brother to um, UPIO, so she's got that staying-type action. And I think a uh, mile and a half would be more to her liking. And as you can see, like she's, it's only the last sort of 20 metres she really starts to, well, last 50 metres, she really starts to get down and get going. Yeah, yeah she looks like a stayer, yeah. doesn't she? Mm. And she started to run a long way out, too. Mm. Yeah, I, I did a lot of work on her when she was... Uh, coming into... Race three here, the Heritage Stakes. Lonro top raider ahead of Perfect Crime, Time Out and Fair Embrace. Very interesting race. Now Lonro $1.50, Time Out 11, Perfect Crime 6.30 and 13 for number nine. To go on the Heritage. They're off this time. Magic had a thing to leap in the air when the stalls opened. Didn't lose any significant ground. Dolce Veloci, the early leader from Fair Embrace, and Jai's jump going between them. Magic of the 800, and Dolce Veloci leads the way narrowly from Jai's jump, a length and a half to time out. Fair Embrace is racing in the middle, and out off the track is Magic Hatter. By golly, Lonro seeing a lot of the outside rail from Perfect Crime, who's deeper still, and last of all is Stashes. Seven lengths between first and last in the Heritage, down to the corner, and the filly Dolce Veloci is the leader. A half length on Jai's jump. Time out on the fence. Third from Fair Embrace. Magic Hatter's rider trying to hold Fair Embrace in the pocket but not succeeding. And Lonro is one from the outside and the extreme outside and under the whip is perfect crime. They come to the 200. Plenty of chances. Time out got Dolce Veloci. Fair Embrace and now Lonro. Lonro. Here he comes. Oh isn't he a top notch performer. Perfect crime battles on but this is five out of eight for Lonro. He's a beauty. Lonro effortlessly from perfect crime, timeout, and fair embrace. And then Magic Hatter followed home then by Dolce Veloci, Jai's jump and last stashes. The Lonro, Rodney Quinn, $1.70, $1.04. Perfect crime, $1.50. Timeout, $2.10. Quinella, $3.30. Trifecta, $20. Yeah, it was a terrific performance by Lonro, getting better all the time. Uh, you like his chances in the Cox Plate. Is he seasoned enough? Is he mature enough? Oh, I think so. You know, like he's, you know, been the Blue Diamond and, you know, all them sort of good, you know, races that do toughen him up as two-year-olds. And uh, he's just a, a thorough professional, you know, just the way he just gets out and gets after him. I know he just uh, fell in the other day at Randwick on that inner track, but, you know, he had to give the, the second horse about five or six kilos and he only just got there and, but... Yeah, he's, mm. he's, he's just a, a, a real shadow of his old man. Now, speaking of, sorry, Joe, um, I'm just saying, speaking of weight, he would get 48 and a half in a Cox plate? Uh, 48 and a half or 49 and a half. I'd, yeah. yeah. Who would ride it? Who would ride him at that weight? Oh, I think there'd be somebody put yeah, there. Yeah, but who, who would you, if you had to choose, who would be your early favourite? Olsen. Yes, John. Five, ha ha, 100. On the T Rose Stakes, Hosanna 97, Barrowin 83, Moonflute 83. Is the market on a, a small field but a very interesting race. Ha ha, a dollar sixty, Hosanna two seventy, Barrowin fifteen, Moon Flute. I wonder who'll lead here. Ha uh ha. -huh. Racing now. Moon flute a trifle slowly away with the Republic Lass. And straight to the front goes Jimmy Cassidy on the favourite. Ha ha. Leads about a half length to a neck on oomph. And in the third position, Hosanna keeping right length the barrow in. Out of the back straight in the T rows and coming along to the 800 marker. Well, Jimmy Cassidy is able to dictate to a nicety on the hot pot. Ha ha. Showing a dollar eighty on Pab Limited. And ha ha by nearly two lengths on oomph for similar margin. Moon flute on the inside of Hosanna. 
Susanna. Another length and three quarters then at the 600. Lady K from Republic Lass and a couple to Barrowin. Ha ha to the point of the corner now. Leads the way a length on oomph and Hosanna. Moon flute over on the inside. Republic Lass the deepest. Lady K and Barrowin is the whipper in. Straightening now. And J.A. Cassidy gives the favourite more rain. Ha ha. And ha ha is a couple of lengths. Hosanna, Moon flute oomph and Lady K. But inside the 200 and ha ha galloping nicely. She's two and a half lengths clear on Lady K trying her heart out and so too Hosanna but all in vain and all the way to Ha 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 from Lady K and Hosanna then Barrowin. Oh she'll pay to follow over a longer journey then came Oomph Moon Flute and Republic Lass was last and at long odds a place divvy of 6.30 no third Hosanna 15.10 Quinella 49.80 the trifecta Ha ha, far too good for again against these horses. I think so. I think she's just too good for the fillies. Um, you know, she had a bit of bad luck at, at, at Ramwick in a track. Dig out of the track, she's not that happy. Um, so, you know, back on a better track, better surface. And I think in the flight stakes, she'll blow them away too. Becoming a bit of a syndrome for these. Flight stakes, on, um, I wouldn't be swapping her for anything. Great. Better ride today, Richard. Absolutely better ride today. They'll let you get away with murder out in front there, Pumper. But uh, it was a better ride. It was a pretty ordinary one the other day. I'm glad you've, uh, you've admitted that. <laughs> but uh, no, she's a very good filly and, uh, and Jimmy did ride her very well. And probably the, uh, the jockeys behind him did let him get away with murder and, and, and he made them pay for it. You know? and look at her here. She's, she's had an easy run in front and when he put the pedal down, she found plenty. Yeah. It'd be hard to see getting beaten in the flight stakes, especially on yesterday's performance. Uh, I guess after the campaign in Sydney, she'll probably head down to Melbourne, Darren. There'll be some nice races for her. Yeah, I think, you know, she, like when she did win at uh, Warwick Farm, obviously that ground was pretty similar to what it was at Warwick Farm. And I was inside of that day and she really has got a great turn mm. of foot on top of the ground. Mm. And that's a question mark that's probably one thing beside her name is that wet tracks, she might be a little bit, uh, she might be a horse to avoid. But on top of the... Abel Way and El Tiero. Market on the race, Pastor Express 13, Henderson Bay 16, Abel Way 15, $4 Dotteressa, 3.30 Mulan Princess, 14 Asia, 11 La Bella Dama, and 3.70 for number 8 El Tiero, with a big wind pool of 200. To our pub and club audience about to Mulan Princess, she's been very, very heavily supported in the ring. And she's now 3.30. And the La Bella Dama from the inside jumped quickly. Abel Way was nicely out, and so was Mulan Princess and El Tiro. Henderson Bay not far away with Dot Aressa, and then Pastor Express, and in a compact field, uh, and two and a half to Pastor Express. Well, Mulan Princess has raced about three and a half clear on Henderson Bay as they pass the 800. A length of Abel Way and wider as El Tiro. And then comes on the inside La Bella Dama, followed by Dot Aressa, and the last pair, Asia and Pastor to express 600 left to run not a lot of change in the order here and Mulan Princess giving backers and there are plenty of them a big sight and Mulan Princess swings in the hill stakes three lengths on her stable mate El Tiro Henderson Bay's in third position and then Dotteressa straightening now down past the 320 and Mulan Princess attacked by El Tiro El Tiro's level with a stable mate and heads an hour and El Tiro past the 200 a half Mulan Princess and a length and a half Dotteressa Mulan Princess not done with though she's coming again at El Tiro she's doing better, she's coming away and Mulan Princess wins the hill stakes from El Tiro Dotteress has run third, then a photo for fourth, Asia La Bella Dama and Henderson Bay from Pastor Express and Abel Way has finished at the tail of the field El Tiro Len Beasley has paid $1.40 and number four Dotteress, Larry Cassidy third $1.70, Quinella in New South Wales has yeah, very good staying there in the making Day of all the horses you've trained to win today, of which have been hard all the way, and um, La Bella de uh, the Metropolitan now, New Land Princess. Uh, in your view, well, she, she's definitely got to be a chance. Like she just she she showed there that she can really um, you know run out a strong trip. So she didn't weaken at all. We can pull low at a longer journey. I think if. Uh, once she gets to the front, she doesn't tend to go quite as hard, but if she had to get in behind something and it was happened to be pocketed or box seated, I think she'd go a little bit hard and then she probably wouldn't get the trip. Mm. But free rolling out in front, she might do it. What looks like being your ride? Now, the Shannon Stakes at Rose Hill Gardens, Diamond Dane top rater ahead of Century Kid on type and Century Kid 690.
Georgie Boy 25, Yippie IO 20, Diamond Dane 350 on type 12, 34 Reenact and Chinui at $12. Dander 5, 55, Inspire 77, Jade Prince 72, Velsontas right in it at 490. 30, Uber third pick in the ring, Velsontas. Now coming up. And they're off this time, and immediately Yippie Io dropped out to last, and Century Kid from a whitish alley jumped with gusto and is straight to the lead now from Jade Prince, and then referral Georgie Boy, Diamond Dane. I realise Yippie Io reenact and Gillespie. They come to the side of the track at 8:50, and Century Kid, the leader, a length and a half clear now. Georgie Boy is holding second, travelling third. Jade Prince and the favourite, nicely posited Diamond Dane, about four to one type and Silver Castle, and then comes wider out Dan to five. Velsont has the middle. Referrals on the fence from Chinoy. Inspire, I realise. And then Yippie Io at a good margin off next. Gillespie at absolute in the field is Reenact there, homeward bound. And Century Kid first into the stretch, about two lengths. Diamond Dane getting right up on the inside. Jade Prince is third from Georgie Boy feeling the strain. And then on type, followed by Referral, who's made many lengths along the rails from Velsont has. at the 200 marker. J.A. Cassidy shaking up Century Kid. Here's on type, a big day on the outside the leader century kid on type is trying doggedly to get the century kid on type hits the front i reckon on type got there a nostril century kid a tight finish third going to diamond dane from referral and further away then was i realized silver castle and then inspire bell santas followed home then by dan defy yippie io a good margin off next in the run another three away in fact was gillespie jade prince chinui and reenact was second last and Georgie Boy at the tail of the field. And on that, back on top of the ground and right out in the middle of the track today, uh, she just found the line in great style. Yesterday, I rode my first winner here since I've been down for the three weeks so far. I've run four or five seconds since I've been down here in a couple of group races, so things are looking good. Good luck to you, Scott. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Scott Schema joining us with Strategic Image. A good chance in the... Piavonic and eight, eight eights. Uh, Piavonic... Well, you don't get better form than uh, form around Sunline. A win in a second, the last two starts. Eight eights, another that's uh, drawn close in. Set and racing. Typhoon Billy jump well, tilt the scales slow. Away fast, Arrogance and Sports and Katango. A lot of pace in the race early as they settle down. Image the outside and Slipstream deeper still. One length further back, Gala Chief being followed by Tilt the Scales, Ruthless Tycoon and Piavonic as last as they went through the gap. Katango one off the rail, 8 eights for the fence. Sports wide out, the three leaders a length to Arrogance Bomberbill. Then Strategic Image, Typhoon Billy behind them on the inside. Followed by Slipstream, Gala Chief, Tilt the Scales, Ruthless Tycoon and Piavonic as they cornered 8 eights the inside and sports together around the turn from strategic image who's coming down the outside sports the leader from strategic image here's slipstream flashing home on the outside and 8 eights sports still in front the three-year-old comes hard strategic image and has got him strategic image has won it from sports i think 8 eights maybe third the inside tilt the scales was a big run then bomber bill closely followed by piavonic who's come from last at the home turn to be right on their heels they were trailed then by Ty. Boon, Billy, Arrogance and Ruthless. Or if he pulls up and has an awful spell and go the Triple Crown in the autumn. OK, and can I get one little... Champion stakes next Saturday. Or if he pulls up and has an awful spell and go the Triple Crown in the autumn. OK, and can I get... Name stakes. Named after a former chairman of the Australian Jockey Club. George on 100, Viscount on 90, Make Mine Magic on 83, Mr Bureaucrat 83. Here is the market and Shogun Lodge $1.80 and entitled to be georgie boy 27 make moment only a whip as compared uh, to 260 uh, shogun lodge over viscount on tab limited at the moment only a whip and they're off in the San Miguel George Main and Viscount was first out from Georgie Boy. Kavwasia is travelling third. Little or no speed on early as Georgie Boy takes up the running. Make Mine Magic is going around the outside of Kavwasia and about two and a half to Make Me a Miracle. Length and a half to Shogun Lodge and about a half and a half. Then Mr Bureaucrat and close up Shogun Lodge on his outside. Well at the halfway and past it at the 800 and Georgie Boy is coming back in one heck of a hurry. Viscount's only a length and a half behind him. Two then to Kavwasia on the inside of 
Make Mine Magic, a length and a half to Make Me a Miracle, about three quarters on the inside is Mr. Bureaucrat and Boss is about to rev up on Shogun Lodge, racing to the bend. They have 500 metres left to go. Georgie Boy, three quarters of a length on Viscount, a length of Wasia, Make Mine Magic, and here's Shogun Lodge letting rip now. Around the corner, McAvoy calls on Viscount. He claims Georgie Boy, a length and a half to Shogun Lodge, who's coming home doggedly, however. Viscount the leader, 150 to go. Shogun Lodge is almost level. Viscount, the great three-year-old. Shogun Lodge can't pick him up. And another win of the George May to a top quality three-year-old. It's Viscount beating Shogun Lodge. Third was Kavwasia. Fourth home, Mr. Bureaucrat. Followed by Make My Magic, Georgie Boy. And Make Me a Miracle was last. Yeah by Hennessy, trained by Graham Rogers, uh, Rogers and written by Mitch Newman and for the first four, number four, Mr Bureaucrat ran... I really want to see these young horses do take on this top grade and win. Well, he won with a bit of authority. I think Karen, uh, Kieran McAvoy just had it very, very quietly turned mm. it home and I think uh, he didn't really see Shaker Lodge stoking up. He went to him quickly but once you let him down, I feel the horse is starting to come away again the last little bit. Here we're picking them up as they round the turn. It's definitely the weight advantage. That's what kicks in the last hundred metres but our bloke, without going over the top, I, I, we just feel there's just a little bit more left in him yet, and uh, we're very, very happy to see him like that. We showed some fight. Race for three-year-olds, if they, you know, with the weight difference, but uh, yeah, I was really pleased with his effort. Uh, young Karen Rowdy in particular. The Caulfield Guineas, the main aim for Viscount? Yeah, that's where he's heading to, you know, Melbourne now for the Caulfield Guineas. What happens after that, well, that's up to how he, you know, performs in the Caulfield Guineas. Is the Cox Plate something you've considered with this horse? Oh, yeah, he, you know, we've always looked at it, but he's got any spot to get there. If you can't perform in a race like the Caulfield Guineas, well, I, you know, you can't win a Cox Plate. He'd have, to, he'd have to run awful well or win the Guineas to be able to win a race like that with Northerly Sunline. It's another cog up again from this type of racing, I feel, you know, different racing. But, you know, if, if he's good enough, he'll get there. With a lot of his horses. Yeah, well, or maybe the training Ross conditions. Ross raced uh, taped up, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did, and maybe the training conditions at Warwick Farm are conducive to horses getting down their bumpers. I don't know. There could be one of a hundred reasons, but it's not affecting him yeah. at this stage. Joe got another gallant run today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, he certainly put in. You know, he does every start, but um, he, he went to win probably about the hundred out, and then obviously the three-year-old with a lighter weight found an extra half a length, um, and you know, essentially it was last year's two-year-old champion has probably stood up to the mark now and come into calculations as a real cox plate or that side of horse so um full credit to the winner but my horse was going he's he's right on track you know yeah he... we've got a good bunch of three-year-olds this year so i'm looking forward to the three-year-old season not only in sydney but in melbourne as well the three-year-olds seem to be a very good year which is the best three-year-old you've seen so far oh, i'll stick with viscount i think he's a pretty good horse i've always liked viscount he's my tip to go on and make the top three-year-old so i'll stick with him wish echo 100 curata story 93 defier 93. Pity he drew out in no man's land today, Defier. Now here's the full market. One out, Foie Day, $10. Juggling Time, 12 Kutamutu, 9 40 He's beautifully drawn. Shinoi, 14 Knickerbocker Kid, 11 Condotti, 62 Glen Rowan, $16. Over to uh, Adamantly, 4 70 Defier, 6 40 And Arabia, 9 40 very interesting betting race. The popular pick on course is Defier, number 10. And on the tan, not a bad break either. One of the best out, Zeta Vane. Fawadi jumped out nicely. Adamantly is up looking for the lead. Juggling time is nice and a handy. Followed closely by Tia. Lawyer got 50 metres. And here the leader clear cut is Zeta Vane. A length and a half, in fact, now on Adamantly. Fawadi's moved up into third posse. Lawyer's fourth. And then comes Kutamutu, followed by Tia. Juggling time. On the fence is Arabia. Then Knickerbocker Kid. A length the fire, followed by Chinoy. Majestically, Glen Rowe. And, and then Condotti and Vel Santas last. 600 out in the Bill Ritchie. And Zeta Vane shows the way a half to three quarters adamantly. Wider Fuadi. A length the lawyer, then juggling time, followed by Kutamutu Tia. One to fire, then Arabia and a Glen Rowan. Knickerbocker kid from Chinoy. Majestically and Condotti and Vel Santas brings up the rear. Zeta Vane attacked very quickly now by Fuadi and adamantly. And coming to the 250, Fuadi hits the front from adamantly. And then Zeta Vane. The fire is struggling at the moment but it's Fawadi from Adamantly and Zeravane and then Defire Fawadi oh it's running off the track it's as green as grass Defire flying too late 
Fawadi. Fawadi has beaten the fire and adamantly. Then a wall, Glen Rowan, Zedavai, Nickabaka, Kiran, Chinui. Arabia, Vel, Santas, Kutamutu, followed home by Lawyer. Further away in the field then came... Uh, a cult because he's been a little bit on the weak side. Good recovery from Jim uh, here as he changes strides and starts to veer out towards the outside run. Yeah, that's why I just having a look. I think Jim might have just given one too many. But he'll be all right. But why do you keep pushing on with... You're a bit Jimmy's tickle, Pink. Happy. And then he was placed, just got... Uh, to fire a very promising four-year-old, and uh, he did a good job to run on the finish second in the race. Yeah, and what about promising. Glenn Rowan's run there to finish fourth? He was the widest runner on the turn. I don't know about Glenn Rowan. Dollars, Diamond Dane, seven, higher. Mm. Nanny, Maroon and Crawl, all on ten. Piavonic on twelve. Uh, Century Kid, fourteen. And of the others, uh, Ben Maitland Gold, mm. Fawadi's big odds, seventeen dollars with Make Mine Magic, and twenty for the rest or better. I like the price of Belders. Thing that's come through the Craig Lee. Um, I think he's the horse to beat. Um, he's a pretty smart horse. He's beaten us once before in the Australian Cup, but I'd like to think we can turn the tables today. All right. Good luck to you, Chris. Thank you very Thanks, much. Mate. Brendan, there's uh, Chris Wood, the trainer of Carpstad Way, going around in the Underwood. I noticed you spotted him at the airport when he jetted in this morning, Andrew. There's yep. the market for the trainer. Well, in my opinion, the best value runner in the race. OK. Backed without exclusion. They're away. Uga Chakra touch slow down on the inside. Ashkalita first out with Hastiabak and Vickers. Away quickly, Malagra missing the orange colours, settling fourth, but pace from her outside with Tully Thunder shooting up fast from True Jewels. On the outside, a length and a half further back as Hot Beat Frangelica and Shar Elmer in the centre. Another length and a half, then Special Grange one, Mo and Dragila is two lengths away last of all. Up the side nearing the 600, Lilu Lil, who jumped from the outside gate, is up on the outside of Tally Thunder. True Jewels three deep and third, followed then by Ash Kalita over on the inside from Hastiabak and Malagra miss. A link to Uga Chaka as they neared the corner, followed by La Lagoon. One Mo starts a run round the outside, and they were followed as they cornered then by Frangelica. Into the straight now, Tully Thunder from Lilo Lil, True Jules. Ascalita can get a rails run and so can haste you back. Wider out, Malagra misses coming with a run, and Vickers is putting in with Yuka Chaka looking for a run clear. True Jules, haste back, 150 to go. Haste back, takes the lead on the inside. Malagra miss chases her, but haste back is clear, comes away. Haste back brilliantly on the line from Malagra miss, and Special Grange flew home, might have grabbed third. Hot beats there over on the inside, and a photo with her from Vickers, Yuka Chaka, True Jules. Then La Lagoon, Dragila, followed by Sharel Malilo Lil. Back behind them, Tally Thunder and Frangelica. And they were followed by... It's on screen, fourth versus both first and second. At the 1,200 metre mark is where the alleged interference took place. Now, winning time was uh, to be confirmed last four... Yeah, it looks a really good race for him today. He's been racing quite well in town without being able to win and bringing him to Hawkesbury today. He should be able to get home, I think. The other prominent riders in the eighth, Teflon, another one for the Hawk Stable. Yeah, he's only had the one run here since he came from Melbourne. Uh, just couldn't keep up at Newcastle over 15. Looking for value outside your top four, would you still suggest at the big odds Ebony night, $49? Yes, you could include it, Brendan, um, in your multiples. Although I just think he might be looking for even further than what he's coming. Links in now, North Boy is set. The Guineas Prelude coming up, Brendan. North Boy, can he maintain an unbeaten run? All clear and they're racing. Tally Dane jumped OK. Ebony Knight slow. North Boy pinged out brilliantly. Away quickly, Counter Agent and King of Prussia. The Concert Grand on the improve. Houston off a long way back and so is Pure Theatre. Ebony Knight and Zonked as last of all by the 800. And North Boy tries to do it all in the Guineas Prelude out by a little over two lengths. Participators second, the Concert Grand third, the inside. King of Prussia fourth, classic cut around it. Tully Dane the rail. Another two lengths two over on the inside as Counter Agent as they neared the corner. And uh, they were being followed by Craig of a break to spectatorial knee one. Pure Theatre, Houston off, Zonked and Ebony Knight. North Boy came to the the turn in front. King of Prussia is the first to throw out a challenge as they come around the home turn and they're clear of classic cut. Uh, back behind them, Pure Theatre getting to the outside. North Boy under serious threat at the 200. The odds on favourite has been headed by King of Prussia and uh, running on as Pure Theatre. It's King of Prussia with Pure Theatre chasing him and then North Boy Pure Theatre's raced up, he's the real McCoy. Pure Theatre comes away and wins it well from King of Prussia, North Boy. And uh, back behind those then was classic cut making good ground and then came Ebony Knight, trailed further back by Houstonov 
and then came counter agent Niwand. Behind these is Zonked, followed by the concert grand Craig of Ad Spectatorial, and back last in the race is Participate. Pure theatre. The bar keeps getting raised. It keeps getting better. Thirty dollars eighty and six dollars. But and uh, he did look the genuine article, although in weaker company. Big step in grade, and he answered the uh, challenge today in great style. Twelve six two. It was in the Carlton Draft Guineas Prelude. Well, we heard from Robert Priscott pre-race, and he gave it a nice chance. The new array of three. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Race number seven, Halls of Assembly. Yeah, he's a nice horse. I've been riding him lately, and yeah. um, obviously uh, Vampire is going to be very hard to beat in the race, but um, hopefully we can run. OK, and, and in the final event, uh, Shy King, what do you about, think about it? I don't know either. Yeah. either. It's uh, Terry Pracy's horse, so that's about all I know. Unfortunately, Horse of the Assembly was in slow the form of... Can't dictate to how Flavor jumps, is how you ride him, it's as simple as that. If he yeah. jumped and he led or was running fourth or fifth or running last, that's how you ride him. He's one horse you can't dictate to, he's got to dictate to the jockey. So Neville's just going around hanging on. I think Brendan said before that uh, he's a group winner. A concerted plunge on track for number nine, Sadurka. And uh, it has actually been backed into favouritism on track. It's been a big move. Sadurka and... Gr Racing and a good dispatch for the exception of Calm Smitzer, who's going to ease over their heels early and sound the alarm first out from Desert Sky. Sadurka away quickly and Flavors up there on the inside. Mr. Murphy's on the improve quickly with Weasel Will and also Scenic Peak settling though. Desert Sky has the lead improving. They're followed by Fubu about seventh the rail and then Royal Voyage Sadurka shot of thunder. Next, the Grey Lazagaletta on the outside from Flavor Weasel Will and then Show a Heart. Two lengths, super impressive. Two and a half to tie the knot. Calm Smitzer and Demission. Up the side, Desert Sky narrowly. From Scenic Peak, three lengths dash for cash. Sound the alarm, a link to Umrum, 600 out. They're followed by Fubu, Mr. Murphy, Royal Voyage, one shot of thunder. Next, Sadurka jammed up between horses, followed by Lazagaletta, Flavor Weasel Will. Then Show a Heart, super impressive. Tie the knot, Calm Smitzer and Demission. As they cornered, Scenic Peak took the lead from Desert Sky, then dash for cash down the alarm, Umrum down the outside, Fubu's in trouble getting a run, Flavor the inside, Mr Murphy battling along, Scenic Peak in front, down the alarm after it, Fubu's getting run slowly but surely, and here's Umrum, dash for cash, a shot of thunder, and Mr Murphy are all descending quickly, but Fubu got the run on the inside, Umrum, Mr Murphy charged, Mr Murphy, Ollie's done it again, five wins in the race, Mr Murphy in the last bound has beaten Fubu and Umrum, some great runs in this, dash for cash is next just behind them with sound the alarm scenic picks a Durka flavor then Lazagaletta show a heart super impressive shot of thunder weasel will a mission and they were trailed calm smites a tie the knot never came into the race and desert sky after going out quickly as one of the last in with one more and that is royal voyage mr mine number five mr murphy the winner damien oliver second placing goes to number 13 fubu vincent hall and third, number two, Umrum, the grand old galloper who's performed so well for many seasons, grabbing third placing in the group one. So it's 5.13. The ride, Lee. Well, we've had a great relationship over the years, and I would rate that as one of his best rides ever for me. You know, he drew 14, he went forward, he's ended up one off the fence running about sixth, just gave the horse every chance. It was a fantastic ride. How'd you feel down the straight here? Because uh, they were all sort of piling up and uh, trying to get scenic peak. He was under pressure coming to the corner. I was a bit concerned, but once he got him out into the open spaces and that, he really knuckled down. He's a very good Caulfield horse, and, you know, I thought he was probably the best. I, I thought he went OK. Second up, we were a bit disappointed. OK. Second up, we were a bit disappointed. So today's his test. You know, he's got to do something today. Um, you know, so we're just hoping. But uh, he gets to his right distance, so... Um, I'm just hoping he can show something today. Now, this was the horse, correct me if I'm wrong, that was the real Mooney Valley specialist for a while? Yeah, definitely. The second mortgage continues to tighten up. It remains the firm elect on track. Market price, the second elect, and uh, looks to be the best value compared to what you're shopping with on track. Tyrolean with a late rally of support. Do not leave it out, according to on-track punters, but it is... The naturalism 
and Nikisha must have got a little squeeze at the start. She's dropped out to be second last with Touch the Groom and Skinjate, one of the first to begin. Plenty of speed near the inside. Brave Chief up there too is May the Horse be with you, settling down third now. 20 lengths would cover the field and Brave Chief broke them up by two lengths. Skinjate second, May the Horse be with you third. Two lengths to Prince Aluka. Celestial Show has enjoyed a good trail on the fence, followed by Dame Kath Market Price. Natch the outside, a couple of lengths to the second mortgage, Tyrolean, and then came in a flurry third from last, followed by Nikesha and touched the groom. Brave Chief is heading to the 600 with about a half length lead over Skinjate. May the horse be with you. Prince Aluka fourth and then Celestial Show, Dame Kath Market Price and Natch. A length and a half, the second mortgage, probably eight or nine lengths from the leader and strung up for a run on the fence as in a flurry starts a move from Tyrolean, touched the groom and Nikesha into the straight now and Skinjate took the lead from Brave Chief. Dame Kath comes with a run wide out and Celestial Show gets into the clear. Down the outside is Natch and in a flurry and to the second mortgage mortgage is going for a needle eye gap on the rails he's got through but it's Dame Kath Celestial Show in a flurry from the second mortgage there across the track Celestial Show in a flurry in a flurry finishes the better in a flurry has won it from Celestial Show and Natch close up the second mortgage and they were trailed then by Tyrolean Whiteout and then Dame Kath from Market Price and Skinjate then may the horse be with you touch the groom well back in the field is Prince Aluka Brave Chief for second last and Nikisha has finished a distant last. In a flurry has won it by about a half. Biffy and uh, Jimmy Conlon have done a magnificent job with bringing her back and uh, she was very relaxed today and uh, peeled off them there at the turn and I thought well she'll get this if she really gets a clear run yeah. and that was fantastic. Yeah. She did get that clear run and she, she showed that acceleration nice. that uh, we all know that she's got. She's awesome if I think she gets to the outside and gets yeah. a bit of room and uh, great ride it's just superb. You know. What's Cliff got in mind? Uh, Caulfield Cup. Yeah. Um, we have had a, an invitation to the Japan Cup, but right. uh, we've kept it under wraps a little because uh, obviously, uh, yeah. you know, wait and see how she goes, you know. Yeah. But uh, no, enormous run. Yeah. Great relief of uh, tension, I guess, today. Oh, yeah, I think uh, uh, Cliffy picked it well, though. I mean, we, uh, we looked at the uh, Underwood and there was no pace, and he said, we'll get pace in this race. What do you think? And I said, well, you're the coach. You yeah. make the decision, and he did, and what a great decision. Well done Fantastic. to you, Danny. Thank you very much. Right. Danny Rose joining us there as they come back, Brendan, after the natural... Horse racing and trainer Fred Kersley will set northerly for the Caulfield Cup in preference to a Cox Plate showdown with Sunline. That's if the horse wins Sunday's Group 1 Underwood Stakes. Despite defeating the champion mare last week at Mooney Valley, Kersley revealed today northerly didn't handle the tight track. I've never seen him so uncomfortable early in a race as he was at Mooney Valley. And if you would have said to me halfway through, I'd have sold out pretty cheap. I went through my mind and did not a place here. Northerly has been the subject of a Caulfield Cup betting plunge, and if he shows a liking for Caulfield and the wait for age Underwood stakes, a cup run would become a formality. And that's and two, four, and eight is the way they crossed the line in the naturalism. Now let's check out the ratings for the Group One Underwood, and some good horses, as I mentioned, have uh, crossed the line first in the Underwood over the years. Uh, a check of the successful. Ratings. There's page one of betting. Northerly three dollars ten, and Universal Prince five dollars and seventy cents. Sale of Century. Enormous run in the Craig Lee at $14 on the trail of the big... And this is the race that's going to immediately determine his future. A win here and he'll be back for the Caulfield Cup, one would feel for sure. Now Akabilk has come up, hit the roof. The Derby winner joins them. Native Jazz, the impressive Craig Lee winner. The lone filly or mare of the field, Lolita Star is about to come along great quality field the all clear and they're away in racing freemason jumped okay sky heights drop to the tail with lolita star northerly away well he's settling third in the early stages it's akabilk slavonic going forward king Kaitel three wide and hit the roof as four wide and northerly sat just off them fifth sale of century a length behind him then carpstead way native jazz right. and a nice tempo set by akabilk he's out by two lengths to hit the roof king Kaitel outside slavonic Northerly in fifth placing from Sale of Century and then a length to Carpstead Way who tracks Northerly. Next native jazz starting to make a little ground from Big Pat. Universal Prince has eased out. And then came Lolita Star, Wellback Freemason and Sky Heights. 
Ackerbilk at the 600 by two and a half lengths hit the roof. Slavonic and King Kaitel. Sale of Century next with Northerly on the outside and Oliver's off. Here comes the fave now. Native Jazz tracks him into the race and then Carpstead Way and Universal Prince has got onto the back of Native Jazz as they corner. Northerly about four away from the rail raced up to hit the roof. Ackerbilk and King Kaitel they got tight there. Northerly laying in again but he's taken the lead the Western Australian. Oliver's on one rein as he hits the front from King Kaitel. Here's Carp Capstead Way, Capstead Way after Northerly, King Kaitel kicks, Northerly, Capstead Way, Universal Prince, Northerly, a fighting tiger, he's won it on the inside, Oliver's won it, a big day for Damien beating Universal Prince and Capstead Way, close up, Sky Heights got home well, so did Native Jazz, Big Pat, King Kaitel, the leader star, Freemason, Ackerbilk, Sale of Century, and hit the roof, and back to the tail was Slavonic. Oh, wow. Sends shivers up your spine northerly. He's something special. Andrew Bensley, tell us more. Yes, we're down here with Fred Kersley. Fred, he uh, certainly wanted to get in there in the straight. What, what's your immediate opinion? That's not unusual, of course, but it is of concern. I'd yeah, talk to Damien and see what he thinks. That is a trait. Um, actually, they're getting closer to him. Really. He pulled out all stops today. He did. He put the head out again because there was a few coming out wide. Yeah, he's... Um, it's making hard work of winning, but I guess he's winning. He's still got a bit of improvement. Just think when you get him right. And you're not going to ever hear me say that. <laughs> you're not going to hear me say it. <laughs> now, you've just watched the race. Everyone's waiting to hear. Is there any commitment after that now? We'll wait a little longer. A little longer? Yeah. Well, I need to see how the horse pulls up, talk to Damien. Um, I don't make quick decisions with him. Um, he's racing differently to what I would have expected, and I need to take consideration that. What's he doing that you... Uh, a little more dour, yeah. a little more dour. He hasn't got that flashness about him that he had last autumn. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take it all in and think about it. Perhaps I'll even check a few of the morning papers and see what they think, where I should be going. I reckon probably most expect you to go to the Caulfield Cup thing, I, I think, Fred. Uh, well, good luck to anyone who's on him in the Cup. Are you? No. You know? No. Haven't taken any uh, early odds yet? No, you're just no good trying to draw me because we're going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well done to you, Fred. Thanks, mate. Fred Kersley will uh, try and catch up with Damien very shortly. Andrew, if you can find Bede Murray, an enormous run, Universal Prince from a Cups perspective, if you go along. Uh, Bede Murray.